We just had we just had to let my special guest appearance helicopter go by that comes by every single episode. <laughs> right. Thank you everybody for tuning in to the Mind Your Own Business with DJ B podcast. I am DJ B. I got my special guest host, F and G Hayes, to my right. What's up, y'all? You thank know you, what time it is. Thank you for coming and joining me again, Appreciate buddy. Appreciate you, gang. And the man of the hour, DJ Head, who is, if you listen to LA radio, this is the heir to the throne. This is the biggest name that you have right now in LA radio if you're not big boy. And got the big boy co-signed like a long time ago. Like you started your career doing phones with big boy for like three years, huh? Yeah. Well, not started my career, but started your ra- started your. Oh no. At the station. Yeah. I said that wrong. I'm sorry. You yeah, know. Damn, I was doing so good till then. Too. No, it's all good. At the, <laughs> at the station, yeah. I okay. started. I started. I answered phones for Big Boy for three years. At the station, that was a different station, though. No, at Real ninety two three. Oh, yeah, I never worked at another radio station before that. Mm, okay. That's the first radio job I ever had. That's what's up. Hey, all right. My first question to you: Do you remember who I am? No. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you thought I was gonna lie? I knew you were gonna tell the truth. Right, right, right. That is why I came out the gate with it. Yeah, you know what I'm I needed that authenticity. Yeah. <laughs> and I, that's why I fuck with him because <laughs> he will tell you the truth. Listen, you meet a lot of motherfuckers, I, I respect and, that. and a lot of motherfuckers have been doing a lot of shit more than me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So, for sure, he said. <laughs> for sure. Okay, you. But I, I've always known that to correlate with your brand is authenticity. Like, you sacrifice clickbait for authenticity, I feel like. Like, because yeah. you've been in front of a lot of people mm-hmm. that you could say a lot of shit in front of, mm-hmm. and you just don't. Because, like, that, that's just not who you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with, I think a lot of these people in media now mm-hmm. don't come from the environments that we come from. And like a lot of my big homies and the OGs and stuff, like I wasn't, I wasn't brought up to do, to say disrespectful things to people, mm-hmm. you know, like throw rocks and hide your hands type shit. Right. Everything that I know, you have to deal with. Yeah. So it's never been like that's probably why like I always get along with all the street dudes more than I more so than like people like my I'm not a street nigga, you uh, know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I always. Was but that talk- resi- they resonate with you a little more. I was always with all of the street niggas. Yeah. And so it was like one of them things where. I got along more with them because it was more of a code yeah. than, than just like saying whatever you want to say and then not having to see nobody. And you know what's crazy? At the level that you at, I imagine that you get the ladder a lot more. All the time. All the time, huh? All the time. How you deal with that? Do you call it out or you just you just let fools be fools? Like uh, was, you, you remember that nip quote? Yeah, you let the clowns yeah, you let the yeah, you let them let them be over there. Well, what I used, I, I remember um, talking to a couple of, I ain't going to say their names, but I remember talking to a couple of people, mm-hmm. and I remember um, there was one conversation in particular that I had. I ended up tweeting it out, too, and I was like, you know, you can't be mad at, at people being clowns, right? right? Yeah. You just got to figure out a way to open a circus mm-hmm. and make money off of it. So that's how I feel right now. That's a bar. That's, that's it. That's a fucking bar. Well, let me tell you how I know you. Okay. <laughs> So, y'all started homegrown, I gotta say, 09. Yep. 09, right? Yep, yep. Okay. Um, well, I started with Chuck in 09. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in his, in his apartment in the, in the house. Where was that at? In Inglewood. In, in the, Inglewood. In the bedroom, yep. But he was doing homegrown at Long Beach State before that. Then he moved into his mom's house. Then when he got his own apartment, we started doing it out of his house. Okay, so I was, um, I was in a group called the Fly Guys. I do remember that. Right, so yeah. and we had we had a jerking song called Penny Nickel Dime, right? Yeah, that's what put us on another level, and we did homegrown like four or five times, right? Yep, <laughs> we went to Long Beach. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We were we were over there, and now that you say that he went to Long Beach State, it makes a lot of sense why homegrown ended up in in Long Beach, right? Yeah. So, and we did homegrown in Inglewood. In Inglewood, you got the house. Sure. Yep. Yep. And that little house apartment. There was another. There was another space y'all Signal had. Signal Hill. We had one. We had a little studio. Shout out to my big homie G Malone and the homie Tommy. We had a studio on Signal Hill. They let us have a little downstairs Where's room. Where's Signal Hill? Long Beach. Long Beach. Like okay. 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 So right, that was, it was the right one. behind the little I Best remember Buy. That was that was my first impression of you in particular. Oh, shit. I think it was there 
because you were spinning when we did an appearance there. And I was like, okay, they got a DJ this time. And I remember, and it was you, yeah. right? And I and I never forgot you. you. I don't know what it is about you. You got a very distinct face. I never forget. Like, we've met each other in passing a lot. Yeah. Oh, thank you. We met each other in passing a lot. Oh, wait, let me, let me finish my monologue. Uh, <laughs> we've met each other in passing a lot, but... We haven't really had a, a one-to-one interaction. Yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah. You know what else is very interesting about that? What? Is that I didn't, because I am notoriously horrible with names. I don't know people. Me too. Every single day, every single time I do an interview, like I, the majority of the people I have on here are actors, right? Yeah. They are name dropping motherfuckers <laughs> like a mother. Yeah. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, I worked with Hannibal and him, 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 him. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And yeah. I'd be like, who in the fuck is that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I get it. I, I think it's because I'm a real nigga. Because, <laughs> like, cause like, real niggas be like, you know, play that song, play that one with the one from the thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't say niggas' names. Like, we don't know their names. I, I, we know their work. Correct. More so. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So... The thing that stood out with me was like last time I did a show, somebody said, I love Wood Harris. I was like, who's Wood Harris? You know who Wood Harris is? Wood Harris? Yeah. Like, not Woody? Not Woody. <laughs> Woody's white, right? Wood Harris. Yeah. I think I know who that is. Who, is, it, who do you think it is? The black dude from, um, the black dude from. He's a black dude. He, I said he's not a white dude, so that was given. Go ahead. Actually, no, I'm thinking of Joe Morton. Never mind. Mm, so you don't know who Wood no, Harris is? No, no idea. I swear to God, listen. Wood Harris has been haunting me for a week now. Because we did a show last week, and the dude that was sitting in your chair said, yo, you know, I worked with Wood Harris. And I was like, who the fuck is that? And he was like, wow. Come from Paid in Full. Yes, he's Ooh. from Paid in Full. He is, um. Oh, Ace. Yeah. He, Ace he, from he Paid in Full. I know, I know exactly who he's from. And then, and when they, when they, and BMF. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know exactly who he's from. When they about. told me who he was, I was like, oh, I love that nigga. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You. But I'm get, horrible with names. I got you. Me too. I'm just horrible with names. Okay. You're making me feel a little better about it now. Right? No, nah, I don't feel I never remember nothing. But I, but I think it's just either I'm either I'm old. Mm-hmm. Well, no, that's no excuse. I've been like this forever. Mm-hmm. I me think too. I was born old. Me too. If that make, that, that, do that make sense? That resonated with me just now, bro. <laughs> I wanted you to expand because I'm like, you have no, an audience. No, I think I was born old. I told my mom that when I was two, that I've been here before and I was an old man. Nigga, you were saying sentences in that <laughs> in that complexity to your mom when you were two, yeah. and you remember it? No, I didn't remember. She told me I said She that. told you you said that? Yeah. Okay. But I do have real memories of when I was like three and five, and but I can't remember last week. Oh. So if that makes sense to you, I don't know how that. Tell me some about some of these memories. Memories. Um, the memory I have is one time I was about to drown. <laughs> I was like, they, my aunt. Lord, you know, God bless my auntie, but she's not really that responsible, or was, at least she wasn't. Wait, and those are the best ones. You, you when you was saying? little, you wanted to hang out with them. So one, they let me go in the pool. My mom told she forbade us from going, forbid me for going in the pool. Like, don't go in the pool, because she knew my auntie. I ain't okay. gonna say her name, but she knew my auntie. Mm-hmm. I got in the pool. My auntie was like, it'll be fine. So we all go to the pool, and I don't think I ever told the story. And I was walking around like, and I just started walking. And if you know, like apartment pools, apartment the motherfuckers dip. You know what I'm saying? Where was this pool? What part of this? Shit, this shit ought to be in like, more in the IE somewhere. In my okay, okay. Oh, and they I, started, got pools out there. I started walking down into the pool, and the next thing I know, I was just under there, like, oh shit. And I went to take a breath and realized, oh, that ain't happening. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Like, oh, wait. Oh. This air different. So, so this is not, this is not okay. Yeah. Right? That's when I realized, like, so then sensory started going off, and I'm like, oh, I need to go back. Right. And. I wasn't no going back. It so wasn't I, that I was, easy. Because it's, it's, I'm slippery. Right. I'm just slippery. And, you oh, know? you're slipping on the bottom of the pool. So now I'm just How like. How old were you again? To be honest, I'm somewhere between. 17, 18? No. <laughs> stupid. I'm somewhere between five and seven. No, no. I'm so I'm trying to get. So then I, all I remember was, and I remember this part of it. I don't remember the panic or nothing. All I remember is looking up, and I remember this white girl. That's probably why I fuck with white people to this day. Mm-hmm. But I remember this white girl was standing there and she had long ass blonde hair all the way down to like mm-hmm. her thigh. She called me Rapunzel. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because I was like, oh, this is my way out. You grabbed her hair and got her yeah, right up her back. Hell 
yeah. when she was with it? Right. No, she wasn't with it. I mean, she started screaming, and they realized I was under the water, and, oh, they, and they got me grabbing out of it. But I, white I, woman's I was, hair saved your life. <laughs> yes. Wow. Real and shit. he was like, I owe y'all one. <laughs> I heard, I heard you. You know what I didn't get from you when you when I start and after I introduced you? What? A deep voice West Coast. West Coast. Okay, yeah, okay. I get it. <laughs> The Mind Your Own Business West Coast is the most lackluster West Coast we have ever <laughs> heard, but we got it. And I'm not, I'm not going to cap. I love that you was like, I'm not going to say the auntie name, but then you told us all the specifics, the location. She's going to know who it oh, is. Oh, she's going to know who it is. She's going to know, but you don't know who it is. No, that's not yeah, a cap. That's what, that's what the whole really family going to know that. They ain't going to be like, oh, right. we know. So, okay. family, if it's in the comments, if y'all want to share with us. This will probably air after Christmas. Yeah, so you feel yeah, me? Let us know. I don't, I don't ever want nothing for Christmas anymore. <laughs> Why? I don't know. I just don't. I have everything I need. I'm I'm, a, I'm more of a utility necessary person. I don't I don't live in abundance like that. I get that. You know what's interesting about being an adult and Christmas? I don't even fuck with Christmas. You like Christmas? No. Well, you no, like no, no. I like the I like the family component to it because I'm a beast at Monopoly, bro. So I love going to my mom's house and just making everybody mad because I want all my money. That you know what I'm is. Saying? So my family's game. Yeah, there. we used to have Monopoly wars, bro. So like, hold on. Have you ever heard of Monopoly deal? No. It is Monopoly, the card game. No, I don't want to play it, that. <laughs> let me explain it to you. I'm you a Monopoly play. head. I, I just want to play. The, I want to roll the dice, and I want a nigga to land on my shit. I like to get the orange and the, and the, and the magentas, and I need my money. <laughs> okay. I hey, need, what color is St. Magenta, Charles though? Place all Magenta the way to New York. Is, is purple. Oh, okay. All right, I want sure. St. Charles Place all I the way to LA Free Parking. That's all me. That's all me. Okay, let me tell you how much of a Monopoly head I am. Statistically... The orange properties are the best properties to have because you have the same odds of landing on everything. There's three properties of all except for Boardwalk and, and the crack houses. I call them the crack houses. Yeah, the projects. Yeah, 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 for sure. The east side. The other side of the 110. <laughs> That's the east side. The, uh, the other side of the 110 is... Baltic yeah, and Mediterranean. $60, you good. Fact. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, the orange properties are the best properties because the likelihood of rolling a dice over five is higher. Mm -hmm. And... Every space on the Monopoly board has an equal chance of getting landed on, mm -hmm. including jail. So you go to jail, you if they go to jail, your likelihood of getting paid on the oranges is higher. Mm -hmm. So the oranges are the most valuable property. It's the have. orange and, the, and it's the it's that L. So if you look, if you, it's, they really did it in temp in heat temperature. Okay. So the orange and then it goes magenta and then the red. Mm. So it's really. All the ones that that are that have that heat signature are the hottest ports, but places to land. You're most likely in dice to roll a six, an eight, or a nine, right. More than anything else, and that will seven. get you on. Si yeah, seven, six. If you get, if you get a lucky seven or eleven, they put that together too. You get a seven or eleven, you straight because you get the space after. No, eleven is bad. Eleven is the red, the first red. Yeah. But if you get a seven, you good. But six, eight, nine. You gotta pay on the oranges, which right. is why orange is the most valuable property in Monopoly. So, I just wanted to give you that prerequisite to let you know I'm a Monopoly nigga. That's fine. Listen, bro. I don't feel like you respect my Monopoly <laughs> business. Man. I don't. But look, whenever you need that, it's it's all it's good. Let me tell you about Monopoly. <laughs> I don't want. I don't. It's the same euphoria. It's the but same. Listen, I'm a monopoly nigga, bro. Listen, I, monopoly. I, I put the board down to a science. But listen, I know the board. Monopoly deal, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day. What the fuck is that? Christopher Valentine's Columbus Day. Day. It's all the same to me. It's all bullshit, and I don't need to know about it. <laughs> hold on, I just, I just, I just this, wait, hold on. That hit me. That hit me too fast. <laughs> this nigga said monopoly deal, Valentine's Day. Christopher Columbus Day, and there was one more. St. Patrick's Day. The and St. Patrick's Day? Fuck with. Damn. It's all, I don't need to know about it. So this is how Monopoly deal works. <laughs> <laughs> it's Monopoly in 15 minutes. Oh, uh, yeah. I fuck with that, but I like the drawing out. I want, see, the thing is, what I do is I let niggas get IOU. You like IOUs. to kill niggas? Oh, uh, every dollar. He I, a I, villain I, that'll tie you up no, to but, a chair, y'all. But listen, though. <laughs> you know the, satisfac the satisfaction that you experience when you bust somebody down to their last five dollars, yeah. they last five. They got one pink bill. Yes, and it was like, and if they I just, just roll an eleven, I'll be okay. And they hoping to and hit if that. If you roll a three, I'll be okay. Bro, and they just hoping to hit that park place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sorry, the free parking. Yes. And they don't. Yes. And they hit that motherfucker. Oh man, come on, bro. Yeah. And then, and then, and then, what I do is, 
I, what I do is because people be sore losers. Yeah. I make them remove their own piece. Mm hmm. Take your you piece don't off. touch that shit. No, nah, no, nah, I'm not moving your piece. Take your piece off, my nigga. Ooh, that's petty. <laughs> you know, I, like, I be, you know, I, I big boss niggas. I be like, you know, you owe me, you owe me nine hundred dollars. I'm a nice guy. Nah, I'm gonna pull my phone out. I need this. For, hey, so look at the face of the person that's bust down to their last pink bill. Look at this. Look at this shit. <laughs> I cannot. Somebody going viral I cannot this holidays, wait, nigga. I cannot yeah. wait until my sisters see this episode. That's They're gonna good. want the. Everybody in your family you. can get the issue if they. <laughs> they at, my my oldest sister is gonna want your fade, my nigga. Ain't turn down nothing. It's all good. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds really fucking good. We gonna see, nigga. But what I'm trying to tell you is, I understand every single emotion that you said to a T, because I am you. In Monopoly world, we are the same in Monopoly world. Gotcha. Heard. And what I'm trying to okay, head heard. So Monopoly deal has the same feeling, and it's faster. Bro, this nigga work for Parker Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> Trying to change their name to Parker <laughs> Triplets, nigga. I'm in this bitch. <laughs> but no. No. I can give you the fade tonight. I can teach you, but it's okay. I understand that you don't want to do it. Mm -mm. You know, you you're beyond that point in your life. I just want a classic game. And I don't I don't like and I like only classic Monopoly. I don't like them variations Pretty of Monopoly. Sure. They have. Uh, I have them. I think that's I'm ready awesome to sell though. them. But I, you like the variation? I think that's cool. Like, I'll cool beat your ass in Monopoly. Yeah, like, I know that you suck yeah, nah, at Monopoly I'm probably because trash you like fucking it. Monopoly. I ain't going to cap to you. But then there's also beginner's luck. So then I probably will come to sack. I don't think there's a such thing as beginner's luck. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Beginner's there, luck don't exist. Bro, there is mm. something that's just natural and pure about a person going into something with no fear. That's why children are so dope creatively. Because they don't have the, like, inhibitions that we have as adults right yeah, like, God, something, they just something are like fearless you know what i'm saying like so like yeah exactly yeah something something exactly children god looks out for babies and fools mm -hmm. yeah that's the one mm -hmm. you're a christian no Me so, I, so if I, I was i was raised christian i just don't practice religion anymore you and me both you yeah, know yeah, some yeah. i've been as my investigative duties um excelled in you i learned that that was a commonality <laughs> between us too right um, the non-religion? Um, not so much identifying as a religion. I like I watched you and Lux interview because mm. honestly I was I was um, looking up Lux because he came on here last, yeah. right? And I noticed that his religious views were very similar to my own. Yeah, so, no, I just think that I mean it was a it was an interesting conversation I had with my family about it, but I just at this point in my life I only do I don't really only do a lot of shit that makes sense at least 85% of my life makes logistical sense mm -hmm. the other 10 15% could be a crazy weekend or somebody I you know want to hang out with or oh yeah I might call off work because I, I'm just feel like I might need a day off or whatever but most of the time 85% of the time like I, I only stop for gas if the gas station on the right hand side so I pull you, you got know, rules yeah. you abide by it's just you. certain things I have isms quirks yeah You'll so. make you're gonna make a beautiful old man pause. Yeah, <laughs> Thank for you. sure. Like you're what old man. You're, oh, I can't wait. You're the niggas that make it. I can't wait to be seventy because then I, I I figure seventy or like because I feel you're or twenty million dollars. If I have twenty million dollars liquid or when I hit seventy, whichever come first, mm -hmm. that's when you really gonna get me unfiltered. I'm not gonna give a fuck what nobody say about nobody's feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm letting everything fly. You giving it first. You gonna be you gonna be the black Larry David. Everything flies. <laughs> hey bro, have you ever done music yourself? Yeah. No shit. Mm -hmm. So it's some head mixtapes or something up there. Oh yeah, it's mixtapes for sure. But um, I've done. I mean, I've done mixtapes obviously, but I produce too. I still produce. No shit, bro. I, I just when I started producing, like I just didn't produce under my name because um, back then it's just it was two thousand like twelve. Or 2011, I think, 10 or 11, something like that, when I really started fucking with it. And um, it's really glasses. Like, he mo he pushed me to do it because he didn't want to have to go pay other niggas that was popping to do beats. He's like, bro, hey, cuz, you smart. You can make beats. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I'm just like, well, I don't know. I ain't never made a beat. Well, you didn't know how to DJ either. You learn. Right. So, because I don't really have no natural abilities. Like, I'm not gifted in any way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I'm not athletic. I'm not tall. Like, two round people made me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have no, I can't sing. I don't know how to play a drum. i just smart. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I use my intellect as my gift or whatever. So How I, old were you when you knew you were smart? Oh, young. It was young. 
because I used to be able to, I used to be able to look at people and be like, look at them dumbasses, but mm. and they would be doing stupid shit. You, you know definitely, what I'm you definitely see. It's very clear that you have a very good perception of the world around you. For one hundred percent. For sure. That's so, that's not a hidden at all. I'm glad. That's that's did, exactly what I want. Did that but, perception like shape your creativity? Like, yeah. So what what, what we my, did? My oh my bad. So when we did was when I was uh, when I did start tinkering with it. Um, the homie Jim Nays, Peru, uh, Rated TG, and a couple other homies were like kind of showing me different things or whatever over there in, in Signal Hill, mm-hmm. and um, we formed a group called the Fraternity. I wanted to, I didn't want to produce under my name because I realized this is around when Muster was booming, right? And so just me thinking ahead, like well, YG I, was putting out all the mixtapes. Yeah, when me thinking ahead, I was just like, if Muster. If Mustard's beats start to tank, which they didn't, obviously, but if his, if his beats start to not be popping, then they probably going to stop booking him as a DJ. And mm-hmm. so me thinking ahead, I wanted to separate my brands, which now it probably hurt because I believe in unification of brands. So we started a group called The Fraternity, and that's what we produced under. And so I never, you know, you don't see any credits with DJ Head, on, except for the, the new Nipsey, the, the Jay-Z and Nipsey song that's under my name. That's right. hard. But the you other, produced that, bro? No, nah, I have co-production. He did, the, he, did the, he did the DJing on it. Yeah. Oh, that's hard. So the, um, when I separated them, that's when I kind of started producing like that under a different name. And then the the, the second beat would end up being that good. The song with Todd Allison and Glasses. Mm. That's the second beat I ever did in my life. That's mm. hard, bro. What you use? That, at that time or now? Both. That time, everybody was using FL. We used FL Studios. But <laughs> I graduated from FL Studio to Logic. I, I fuck with Logic still to this day. Childish Gambino uses Logic. Yeah, I like sure. Logic. Just because it's simple, it's straightforward, and I'm an Apple nerd. I was about to say, nigga clearly got the Apple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Apple nerd. Do you Listen. still record music? Record it like what? Rap, nigga? No, I don't rap. No. I've never rapped. Oh, okay. That's what I meant. Oh, you meant mixtapes? Oh, yeah. no, 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 no. I was, I was just DJing and hosting mixtapes, but I I've never. You. You, you, I've only recorded... Uh, spoofs of songs making fun of niggas. I got you. So you've never had like a serious song where you just like pin some shit. You never. Or it's never been recorded. Shit? Nah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Freestyle. Never. Okay. I just only all of it is just making fun of niggas. Mm, that's all right. Yeah. That shit sound like it a ghost. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. No. And and if you don't mind me asking, like, why not the artistry? Why the more production side? The production. I just don't care. Side? I just don't want to rap. I just I'm not a rapper. Like to be honest with you, I got a real. It's interesting for me being in the field that I'm in because I just don't really give a fuck about a lot of shit. And so, like, like I don't care to be accepted. I don't care to people like me. I don't care if you play my music. I don't care if you like my music. Like, I just wouldn't care. Mm-hmm. So it, it hinders me a lot from doing music in that way because I'm not tripping. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, yeah, people fuck with this shit. All right, that's what's up. Boom. Mm-hmm. Or, like, my podcast, same thing. Like, man, we fuck with this shit. Okay. It was going to go up every Thursday if you liked it or not. <laughs> so it's just like, for, you can't be that way, though, when you are pursuing music or any kind of... I always tell artists this when I go to the studios and shit. It's like, people make music, right? Yeah. And you want, naturally, for people to consume your, your music. Mm-hmm. The problem that I feel like is in the music industry a lot of times is when artists and creatives forcibly want the consumer to consume their art mm-hmm. under their under their terms. Yeah. So they'll be like, well, this shit ain't going like um, David Sebastian, right? David Sebastian is an artist. I don't know if you know who he is, but he popping. Got a big record deal and everything. Yeah. But then he starts. And he's heavy in the clothes, too. Right? He got, exactly. But he got his start be going completely against the grain. I'm not putting my shit on DSPs. You got to go to my website and listen to the album. You can't download it. You have to listen to it. You have to stream it on my website only. It's like, I get it. But that's also limiting the way I consume my shit. If I'm in the car, I'm not gonna be going to W. Like I'm, I'm right, just I'm not, not about to type in a website so, to listen to a song while yeah. I'm on the way to fucking Taco Bell. So that being said, oh God. once you once you start to play in a consumer market, there's only been one artist. I always tell people his name, nigga named Stevie Crooks. He's from the IE. He's the only person to ever tell me he don't ever care to make money off his music. He told me to my face when we was doing. He was like, Yeah, I don't care if I ever make money doing music. I just it's my passion. I love doing it. Bet I respect that. But we got nothing to talk about. You right. know what I'm saying? We in two different worlds. We in two different worlds. Because once you start to monetize, now whatever your art is becomes a consumer good. Right. It requires marketing, promotion, and acceptance. Mm-hmm. Right? So once you start playing in that world, your shit needs to be consumable. You like that world? What? The world where where you're playing all these odds where it needs to be consumable. 
I think you I think if you're gonna monetize, yes. Do I like it? I like it in doses. Just depends on what it is. Like, um, like my beats, right? Yeah. Well, I I don't know how to make. I'm not a real producer. Like I can't produce your whole album. You feel like you're I'm a, a fake ass producer. You feel like you're a fraud in the in the producer. I'm 100 percent a fraud in the producing world. I feel the same way. So like I can make beats, yeah. but I can't produce. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't play keys, none of that. I just know it sound good, and I'm a great arranger. Like, I'm like Puff in the way Cali. that he, like, not, I mean, I wouldn't even say Khaled. I've never seen him arrange, but I know what Puff did, and I know what Dre did, and I know what those type of people do with their orchestrators, right? Mm -hmm. I know what's, like, I can sit, like, me, that's the way I produce now. I'll make a beat completely by myself in Logic, yeah. and then I'll take all my shit, i take it to Mars and have him play everything on top of what I'm doing. You got a real good connection with 1500, huh? There's my niggas. Yeah. So, like. That's the way I'd create, and but all, but I know that I'm not pro producing. We call them track eight. I'm not producing track eight about your grandma or about your homie that passed. I'm not doing that. I don't know what the fuck that sound like. What the but fuck is track? Need, oh, I well, get it. Just not a hit. I get it. I get it. I get it. All I'm I, making I, is I, the I, joints. Right. What's the joint? That's all I know how to make. Can you make track one? No. <laughs> the intro. Oh yeah, no. The intro. Because be the, live intro and fuck, the intro. The intro is a different vibe. No, like, I can't do that. Like where it is, I. Unide un undeniably a slap, but not for the radio. All I know how to make is slap. It's not even radio. If you well, like me, song, shit. The the dreams, dreams the and nightmares, nightmares. I can't do that. Or like Roddy shit. Or like uh, I think Cardi had one. The first one. number one that came to my head was BPT. BPT was my favorite number one, almost. Ever. See, I could do a BPT. I know you can. That's what I'm saying. I think you're sleeping on yourself. Like, Maybe I've never tried. All BPT I know. Is timeless. But what I'm saying is, my point is, I just make. Slap the joints. Like, what's gonna be the one? Right. That's all I know how to do. Cause I, cause I don't create how y'all, how not y'all. I don't create how artists and creators create. I create from a standpoint of numbers, metrics, and science. Yeah. It's not feeling or emotion. You're a logical person. It's all just science. Everything Actually, you do is logical, right? That nigga Lux said the same shit. He was like, the niggas in Atlanta, they understand like the science of music. The science. The yeah, science. Sure. They, they understand the that it's about shit. the music. More so than it's not any a feeling for me or a vibe, as they say. They say it's a vibe, and I don't know what that means. Like, no, nigga, you I know that this shit is slow as fuck. The BPM need to be bumped right. up by 15. If you we wanted to, to slap in the over. club, you make it a 98 to 102. You put the snares on the two and the four, and you put a shit ton of bass. Like, is that the shit you do? That's how you do it, you in theory, but not really. No, but yeah, okay. in theory, yeah, yeah, I, I simplified. I'm sorry, it's all good. <laughs> 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 Nah, uh, hey, and you know, what are some of your favorite moments for Dutch and Wire? Because, I mean, I know, like, everybody get a chance to see you on radio and shit, and, you know, that's a pretty public platform. Especially. And you in the studio regularly, apparently. Yeah. Production-wise, you. it's been a couple. Um, my favorite moments, that's interesting. Or, like, even most interesting moment, a squabble broke out or just, like, you know, anything interesting. It came through with a one-pound blunt. I know you don't smoke or whatever, but, like... Oh, you talking about just random, just yeah, anything, not yeah. necessarily production? Oh, yeah. I well, mean, that's, like... It's just to make your eyes open. Um, I remember this one time I went to a studio. Because I go, I used to go over by myself, like, here. Like, I come either by myself or with Silas. But, so I, I went to the studio by myself, and it was, like, I was telling them... They wanted my, my honest feedback or my critique on the music. And I was telling them, like, no, that shit whack, bro, like... You know what I'm saying? And see, and the problem is I got resting bitch face, too. So, mm -hmm. I don't, so like, I just, I, I look like this whether I'm happy or sad. You right. know what I'm saying? Or, right. like, I don't have no, there's no <laughs> high or low. It's just I'm always like this. You could right. told me I got a million-dollar contract or, nigga, somebody just died, and I'm just going to look like this. Damn. So, it's, Either, a, it's every, just. Every, every response is just. It's yeah. just, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Damn. So. So my prop, that's one of my things in dealing with other humans I had to learn. But I'm just like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, bro. So You don't feel like that's something you need that to shit, work on? That shit, I'm working on it. Pray for <laughs> it. But I'm like, yeah, bro, that shit ain't good. And they were just like, and I guess they were looking for more. And I'm just like, that shit ain't good, bro. Like, So now I see his homies posturing and shit. I'm like, oh, okay. All right, so now we, let's have this conversation. Right. Okay, cool. So listen, bro, I came here by myself. Okay, now. Y'all can do whatever y'all gonna do. It's six of y'all, seven of y'all in here. Y'all right. can do whatever y'all gonna do to me. You know what I'm saying? But when y'all finish, the music's still gonna be trash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
So and that's why, and that, niggas, and that's really why, and that's why this nigga Nip was like, "Yo, you be talking to niggas fucking crazy." <laughs> but no, but, it's the, but but it comes from a place of love. I was like, or <laughs> or we can go back in here and I can fi- and I can tell you how to fix your music because mm-hmm. you know, like, what are we doing? What? You know, but, <laughs> you know what but, but you know, you you feel like you know. I, I, in that case, I knew. Right. It's, to- it's the thing is about you, like with your straight face when you say something like that. There is. Uh, undertone of arrogance. Yes, I agree. I, and it, I know it comes off as arrogance. Right. But I don't mean no harm by it. It's just that I know what I know, but more importantly, I know what I don't know. If I don't know some shit, I'm going to tell you I don't know. Right, okay. Bro, the same way. Y'all must have similar birthdays or some Capricorn, shit. Capricorn, January 12th. Oh, I am nah, not a nah. Capricorn, January 12th. <laughs> yeah, nah, yeah. But I was going to say, <laughs> bro, be on the same shit, though, bro. Oh, but I'm a, I'm a literal person. Yeah, but I'm I, very literal. Yeah. Very I, literal. I find, I think... Um, Okay, here's a question. Okay, it, do you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? Neither. So what do you? Identify? I don't identify. No, I'm fucking with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't identify. As a person. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, I think uh, I'm probably more of an introvert. Okay. I just have extroverted personality traits. Cause I don't really. Cause the thing is, I'm not a pack runner. Like a lot of people need, like, packs. To right. run in and, or acceptance or a, a community of sorts, right? Right. I don't really need that. Like, I, I'm cool being... You don't bar- mind standing against the pack. I see that in you. And 100%. The thing about um, niggas like you, and I identify with it as well. That's why I recognize it, because I feel like I identify with it. And I've seen it in artistic, too. Yeah. I feel like you and me and artistic, the similarity that I see between the three of us is we are introverts in an extroverted environment. Yeah. Like, have you been, you've been to our artistic party, right? Of course. That nigga's an introvert. Yeah. But he, he don't people. he don't stop talking on the mic, but you can't really but there's other DJs where they're talking on the mic and you remember that that nigga was talking on the mic. Oh yeah. You yeah, get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's not me. It's not you. That's a re- that's another reason why I I don't participate in a lot of that shit either. What you, what, what is that shit? Like though that world, like I'm not trying to be the biggest club DJ. I'm not. Uh, I just don't care. Mm-hmm. That's I, I don't know. I, I, I'm Are trying. Are you more of a, like a radio personality than a DJ? I'm more. I, well, I started off as a radio. I got turned. I turned into a DJ. Oh. I learned how to DJ after I was doing radio at the college. That makes so much sense now yeah. that you tell me that. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I haven't always. I wasn't always a DJ. I, I became a DJ one out of because I was curious and passionate about it, and then two because glasses made me. Mm. Hey, cuz you finna be my DJ. I'm I not need a, a DJ, it's you. He was like, I'm, you I was here. like, bro, I'm not a DJ. He's like, yeah, but you smart, cuz you can learn. That's hard. I became a DJ. I started, I took a year to really learn the craft. Shout out to DJ Cali, uh, DJ Dents. They really embraced me, took me under his wing. Cali did. Bought me my first mixer, bought my first needles. Let me carry his, his crates, cuz at that time it was it was vinyl. Yeah. And, um, Really? That makes that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because I fulfilled one of your technical writers one time. Word. Yeah. Somebody hit me up because they hired you, and was like, "Head asked for this, this, and this. Can you, can I rent this from you?" I was like, "This old CDJ ass <laughs> nigga." <nigger." laughs> okay. That makes sense. That sounds like a nigga who didn't want to be a DJ at first. Yeah. Because so them because them DJ DJ ass niggas want techniques. You no, know, I want techniques, but. A lot of times when I do events, they don't have proper staging, mm. and so it rumbles, and then I can't DJ right. You don't got phases? No. No, This at that time, there was no phases. This was like three months ago. Oh, word? It was two <laughs> CDJs and, um, and, a, and an S9? Two CDJs and an S9. Yep. And I was like... Yeah, that's just habit now. I was like, I got techniques in S11? Nah. I don't I don't fuck with the vinyl at, at gigs no more when people hire me, because it's too unreliable. A lot of people's equipment... Like, you probably maintain your shit. I do. Imagine going... I've been, six, I've been on tours, right? Where I ask for whatever I'm asking for, mm-hmm. just think somebody in let's say Minnesota. You think uh, he, bro? Okay, I get it. It get ugly. Yeah, you got a technology. You blowing you know. in it, licking the little connectors, like, bro. You know how this shit go. Yeah. Okay. The tone arm be fucked up. I don't know how that shit. Okay, well, so I just be in LA. That see, I don't know. I, that comes from a place of trauma. I get it. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. That comes from trauma, bro. I've been on the road and having to use a, another nigga equipment. And you request Technique 1200 thinking that, oh, everybody keeps, everybody cleans they shit. They go get tune-ups. Mm-hmm. They shit is grounded internally. Right. No. 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 They, they in there. They in there. They, I seen a wire, bro. A ground wire ran to the 
to the table and was like, rap. I'm like, bro, what the fuck is... They ran into the table for the metal ground? For the ground, bro. <laughs> and it's just like, you know what? Just So when now, from now, Salas got my thing and, and Jam got my thing. Now, just tell them two CDs. It's hard to fuck up some CDJs. Yeah, that means the ball good. bearings got to be fucked up. Right. Or But at the at worst case scenario, you can run in MIDI. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now that's 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 been like that for years. What's crazy to hear y'all talk about that grounding wire and shit? That's an electrical theory. It's electrical property, right? right. Yeah, he's yep. a, he, he yeah, I'm a electrician. I'm an electrician by yeah. trade. So what I was gonna say is, there's an electrical component to DJ in my nigga, or the like turntable that's, that's, run electricity. That's really I mean, weird no, no saying. shit. But I'm just saying, <laughs> though, like, I mean, like y'all have to troubleshoot wiring, though, is what I mean. Like, right? Okay, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah like y'all yeah, gotta troubleshoot ground wire. You gotta bro, and listen. There is a if you're, if, wire if you're a DJ, right, or an audio engineer, a mixer, a camera guy, an audio guy, you're a nerd. Right. You have to be because you have to be able to troubleshoot on the fly. Oh, God. C- computers are crashed. That's happened to me before. And you got to de- you got to go analog or you got like it's just all kind of shit, bro. And yeah, so crazy. that shit traumatized me early on with fucking with other niggas equipment. So I'm not doing that no more. I'm not taking no chance, bro. At the end of the day, we yeah. most of us are just using cue points for 85 percent of the party anyway. Bro, so, listen, I'm so not, the technique I'm, ain't that. You can't, the you can't fuck with everybody. Know, turn so, so wait. Techniques just, are turntables. Okay. Oh, thank you. Because yeah. y'all having a whole conversation that nobody was about to understand that was watching this podcast Technique except 1200. for DJ. Yeah, thank you. Bro. Yep. But the so new I pioneers are fire too. When they not new, but those pioneer turntables are actually fire. Mm. They fire. I don't know. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't got that kind of money. I got four 1200s, and I'm like, listen, wherever I go, these going, unless I use my controller. Then I use my controller, but uh, I can fuck with CDJs. Like CDJs is easy. You know what exactly is the CDJ? Okay, so yeah, no, a CD. that's a CD turntable, right? Oh, man. But a lot of DJs you probably seen use controllers, where it's just a MIDI and a bunch of lights. Right. You seen shit with a bunch of lights? Yeah, oh God. That's a MIDI controller. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> but I'm his DJ. Like when he when yeah, we nah, because I, okay, I also wanted to talk to you about this. So, um, I wrote on Twitter. You, I realized that now. That you retweeted this, but you already told me you don't know who the fuck I am. So <laughs> no, but Cub remember though. Now he does. But yeah, yeah. Clearly, yeah, Cub remember now. <laughs> clearly, a week ago, uh, a month ago, when I said, when I'm dealing with these new artists, bro, I think what would Head do? Mm. Right? I mm. said that. I said that on Twitter. You re- even retweeted me. Mm-hmm. I was like, see, the Head. <laughs> well, see the thing, but you don't. That could get you into some shit too. You know what I'm saying? No, not, well, okay, not in me, a negative let way. Me ex- let me explain why I said it. Because we he started a thing called the Reup, right? Mm-hmm. And it's basically um, a Helping showcase, a showcase for up and coming LA artists. It's more like your you heard of Payday LA? Mm-hmm. It's like a Payday LA, right? Or like you know or like a bananas or gotcha. like whatever, right? Gotcha. So that's that's our version of that. And he didn't want to fuck with me to DJ at him mm-hmm. because he was like, bro. I see the level you at right. DJing these parties, bro. I cannot afford you, bro. I was like, yo, let, let me in on it. Like, I want this. I, I felt like it could be my gift to the city. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I wanted to give back. And I got to give you 45% credit <laughs> for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a lot, too. Because there's, there's a lot of different. Because I, I see you. I see what you're doing. And I want it. And I'm like, I need to give something back to my city to show them that I appreciate them. You get what I'm saying? I feel that. Because they'll give it back to me. I know they will. Fuck with the city and the city will fuck with you. That's exactly. What, that's what exactly. we always say. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and, you know. and, and, and and like, that's that's the main reason. I was adamant of coming to you like, yo, why don't you fuck with me on this? I should be your DJ because I'm, I'm dope. Yeah, no, nah, fact. And yeah. I got a, I got a, 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 a pretty good name for myself and in the And you've been gay forever. And I've been gay. So, uh, we had a problem with an artist, right? There was there was this artist that left her hard drive with me, or left her flash drive with me, and was pressing lines to this nigga like, yo, I left my flash drive with your DJ. Give me his number. Not really a pressing line. She was just asking. She was trying to assert her position, but it wasn't like... Okay. So what happened? Me? So he was like, I mean, like, I just got a group chat on Instagram, but I ain't about to give you this nigga number. And she was like, he already gave me his number. Why don't you just give it to me again? I was like, well, if he gave you his number, hit him up. (laughs) And then, like, so she had to go through her archives and find me because I did hit her up before. And she was going ham, nigga. She was like, 
Yo, y'all not doing business correctly. I was supposed to go on at 9. Y'all put me on at 10.30. And then y'all cut my set short. Like, what the fuck is going on? This is business. This is business. This is you a DJ. This is your business. And then I like, I was like thinking, she doesn't have a problem with me right now. You know what I'm saying? She has a problem. She's um, she's projecting stuff that's happened to her. You know Correct. what I'm saying? It's not, it, this doesn't have anything, because she was talking about how I'm not conducting business correctly. No, I get it, she's protecting it. Right, and like, this is, this is past trauma from her. And I literally, I don't know why, maybe you tweeted something. But you, I was like, what would this nigga head do? You know what I'm saying? Like, because I know you deal with a, a shit ton of personality. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I have never seen you not have a level head. I don't. I think it's just come from, um. Have you, when's the last time you lost, lost your cool? Shit. Um, it was at least three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time I lost my shit? I don't know. Salads don't even know? I don't, I, you know what's crazy? I'm going to tell you the, tr- the truth, right? It was some food shit. Oh, it was some, oh, it was some food. Oh, we was in fucking Atlanta. You my dad. Oh. I was about to lose it. I was about to lose my shit in Atlanta, bro. I didn't, but I was about to. Mm, what happened? So, the lady was just bullshit. She was playing with me. Don't play in my food. She was food. a waitress? Yeah, yeah, when I'm hungry, bro. That's when I lose my shit. Mm. When I'm hungry, yeah, I don't got up and walked out of meetings before. Like I gotta go. I'm hungry, bro. Salads is like I'm. Did sorry. you eat before you came here? No. Do you want a snack? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. I made a whole crash. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Cause I'm gonna go eat after. Yeah, but, I heard him okay. talking about some Thai shit. Yeah. yeah. Nah, he was like, okay, so when we rapping, and right, where's the Thai right, coming? Right. 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 Yeah. So no, um, that but I don't really lose my shit, bro, right. because I think that. I think that for me, that's a sign that I empower somebody else, and uh, I'm and I'm not willing to relinquish my power over me to you. Are you a reader? Yeah, I I I, I was a, yeah I'm a book big bookhead. I don't read. I listen to audiobooks. Have you listened to the Forty Eight? Yeah, of I did all that, bro. Of course you. No, I I can tell a nigga that has that has Forty Eight. Yeah. And you Forty Eight all 48ed. that. But like. When when somebody when somebody takes your power away, like for instance, right? I've been disrespected where I should have lost my shit, mm. but it, but I understand in that moment, like what you said. Oh, I understand. You're not actually mad at me. You're mad at your life circumstance, mm. and now what I've said to you has triggered that life said life circumstance. Right. How did you learn that? I learned that early, bro. I learned it from Hov. No, I didn't learn that from Hov. I know you. Le- I know you didn't. I don't think many niggas learned it from Hov. <laughs> yeah. But I learned it from Hov because I think. Hov don't do interviews often. Mm-mm. You get what I'm saying? And he did some random interview with some guy. I don't know where it was. It was like a loft somewhere very high up. And he was like, he goes to therapy. He was talking about how he goes to therapy. And he was like, like you know, you see a nigga in the street, and then you're looking at him. He's like, yo, what the fuck you looking at? He's not mad at you for looking at him. He's worried that you see something insecure about him. Correct. That resonated with me to the utmost extent of understanding people. So like, I, I I put that narrative first whenever somebody talks to me, and it's like a, a dope filter. Like You gotta run it through that filter, bro. I think, um, I picked up on that early, mm-hmm. but I do remember like this one time where I had to teach that to my to my, my, my homies, right? We all was, we were shooting this video in, in, in my city, in Carson, in my city, we, it's like this bar that we were shooting on Avalon, and I was playing a role. I was playing the DJ in the video. Right. I did it for the for one of the homies. And Are we, you Samoan? No. You live in Carson? I'm from Carson, <laughs> but I'm not. No. I know. <laughs> hey, you, you don't want no problems with them. No, so, not at all. <laughs> no, no. I just want to. I just. You don't for want, some reason. He good. When he <laughs> is, <laughs> saw me out. Saw me out. Saw me listen, out. This is no, all but listen, 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 listen. <laughs> so we were doing this. We were shooting a video. And when we were wrapping the video, it was like a weekend, so they were gonna open for the night. So I'm packing my shit, and in walks the DJ with the cart, like with his shit. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my bad, bro. Like, let me, I'm, I'm getting up out of here. Uh, give me like two minutes. Let me finish. I get out your way. He was like, what's going on in here? It's like, bro, we were shooting a video. I was playing the DJ in the video. I'm finna pack up and get out your way. I, you got, it's all good. Right. He's like, cause I'll just take my shit and go home. Like if they hired you. Oh. And I'm just like. He's clearly projecting his insecurities. Like, so now the homies is like, bro, what's up with this? Like, now they tripping. Uh, and you know, like, and you, uh, it's the, and the problem when dealing with, with your homies is you be like, yeah, bro, I'm not tripping. Yeah, but we tripping. Right. right. And now it's like, you ain't got a trip, nigga. <laughs> so now when they say that, it's like, oh, we're overriding 
your yeah. say so in this situation, right? right? right, right. So, so, so but that's I, also their job too. So I was like, no, kind I stalled him out. So I'm like, we let's just help me get this shit out of here. So we packed up, we got in the truck, we leaving. Mm-hmm. So in the car, I'm like, they were like, bro, you should. We was, I like, listen, bro, this is what you don't understand. I'm very aware of what y'all was about to do. <laughs> People like that, bro. This is what you gotta understand. For us, we're packed. We we just shot a video and we packing our stuff. We finna go do this party, right? For that man, he been looking forward to this bar all week. That's all he got. Mm-hmm. So when he felt like that was threatened, he's naturally going to react. Because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, he's looking forward to that one night where he could be the guy. Mm-hmm. And it looked like that was being taken away from him. So when I explained it to them that way, they understood. This is years ago, bro. This right. is like 2014 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm explaining this to the homie, and that gave them that perspective that you got from Hope. Right. It's the same thing. It's beautiful. I, I don't give a fuck how anybody receives it. I think that is a very important thing for people to understand when understanding human behavior and interactions with other people. You now, gotta understand that people are, are first project through their trauma. Now, what I will I will admit to you, amazing dealing with men, because I could oh, oh I could tell oh he got a gun oh he set tripping right oh he high oh he drunk mm-hmm. oh he finna go he finna go call the home I could see all of that yeah. I could see all of that yeah women they hit you with the left they hit Bro, you with the I left don't know, real quick. I literally don't know when a woman is mad or flirting with me I have no I can't I don't know it's the same I don't know so like that's the struggle that I do so that discernment only empowers me professionally. Hey, and I, I just kind of wanted to ask one question before we put a bow on it. Like, do y'all still come across that often? Them interactions where it's like niggas is me Every mugging or day. want like All have the time. animosity or something. Every single day. I go it, everywhere. It, it has micros to it, you know what I'm saying? But, and then like it doesn't explode much, but to understand that someone is speaking from their own trauma, it's very common. Like, every fucking day. Like, you don't, you don't go like this if it doesn't recognize something that has like fucked you up before you get what i'm saying yeah for me i I mean yeah i still deal with it but i just i don't look at it like a bad i don't look at it like a negative thing i just look at it like so there's a couple of things that i that i picked up on like i don't never i don't never head not up always head not down so like why is that though it's just something i picked on when i was little when I was a kid, I used to do that. Doesn't because it seem like you even noticed that. Though. Because all the, I just I recently just noticed it when I was like 33 or something. Mm-hmm. Like, I noticed that, I mean, realized that I was doing it, right? right? But as a kid, I just noticed all the street dudes was like, who's that? Like, or, what's up? Or what's up? Where are you yeah, from? Yeah. Or whatever. Oh, so, so that would be. Your, putting your head up is more of a chest out. Right. So right, when I see people, you? I just be like. It's a humble thing. Oh, I got you. It's like, I got, humble. you know, I used to do that. And I used to live with my homie. He have Japanese. So, oh, so it's. And really I used to just pick up on little social cues like that where I just be like, like, what's up? Then what's up? Right? right? It's mm-hmm. a different what's up. You know any Japanese at all? Yeah. Just uh, a little bit. Not go like on, Ichi, how? I'm, 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 I'm I Mexican. I know arigato gozaimasu. No, no, I'm Mexican, bro. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Like, oh, I know a little Spanish, too. Yeah. You feel me? Oh, okay. Yeah. Hombre. Yeah, I grew up with all Mexicans. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Hey, you ever fuck with that uh, Mexican spot in the valley? It's... Uh, Salsa and beer, no. it's like oh yeah, I've been there. One. Yeah, that yeah, shit fire as fuck. I used to. You said you said okay. Yeah, no, I could definitely tell. Yeah, I could aspect. definitely tell you like yeah, that shit. Before whatever, we started bro. rolling head, said you know no, nah, I don't smoke, I don't drink. Uh, my vice is food, and I don't cook. I don't know how to cook. What's the spot? What's the spot out here? Let's say we looking for a good burrito it in depends. Los Angeles County. Most people say Ramona's, but that's yeah. Shit, thank you. That shit is like. It's, it's mid. Thank you. Pop it, brody. Pop that shit, Y'all bro. Y'all niggas lost me just nah. now. Ramona's is fucking I'm fast. going to the taco spot on Slauson before Ramona's fast. Bro, it's man. a spot called the park. I don't... If it's, I'm near a Ramona's and I'm hungry and I'm in the mood for a burrito, I'm going to Ramona's. But it's not the same that's as only, that's, because you've been, that's because you've been conditioned to do so. Big facts. But, like... Where you it's about not, to? Huh? No, my bad, what did you say? I was about to say where you was about to say the Mexican. Well, spot yeah, where's the spot? It just depends on what I eat based on geography, not 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 taste. Oh, you're a logical person. Like, where am I? Yeah, I always I be eat? like, cause like we, if we on, in the west side, if we in, on the east side, if we in Hollywood, if we we, I have my spots that I go to. You never bust a mission for your taste buds. Mm, no. Oh. No. Mm-hmm. Damn, bro. I'll That's be at the crazy. house and I literally. So 
I'm very disciplined. I literally eat whatever's around me based on geography and convenience. That's wow. how I live my life. That's crazy. It's really, really. That's what I'm saying. I don't really base a lot of my decisions on how I feel. Y'all are opposite. I, yeah, we for sure opposite. <laughs> but you know what, though? Bro is like KD. And KD is kind of the same way with my best friend. But one of my best friends and shit. Bro is like that. He born in January and shit. So, like. You know the personality dynamic is similar. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? it's just a, it's just a, yeah. it's just a like. For instance, if if it's too if it's too far or inconvenient, I won't even fuck with it, no matter what it is. How far is too far for you? It depends on traffic. Man, depend I've driven to Seattle for French that's toast, bro. Shit. See, well, that's bullshit. No cap, bro. That's no cap, bro. bullshit. No cap, I will. No, no, I don't think you're lying. I think yeah. it's bullshit. Yeah, no, 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 it's that good. <laughs> what I'm it's that good. You bro. are bullshit. No exactly, food is bro. that good. Said what? You drove to Seattle? Yes, bro. But I mean, you know, yeah, you also want to take a nice little drive no. and a road and then, trip. Like, you got a little vibe with flight. you. And that's, see what that is? That's trauma, bro. That's you running. That that's you. Either you was on the run, or. No, Why listen. do I gotta be traumatized you have been for some de- no, no, listen, bro. because you've been denied something. You was before. on the run, you've or you got a you got a girl before. that you was trying to get away from. Yo, living yeah. it's something that you wanted been. to get away from for a minute. Facts. He, it's I no way that you just cognitively you you had your cognitive mind in check, and you was like, I'm about to drive this here and get some French toast. Even I, what I think it wait. might be. Well, wait, wait. <laughs> what I think like, it might. What I think it might be. Maybe you even missed out on a function. Like niggas was like, Am I right? We went. We went to New Mexico and had the best carne asada fries we ever had. I know. And you didn't go? I and then, like, he's like, I'll never what? do that again. I had just ended my semester of uh, trade school. It was celebratory. Yeah, so okay, it was boom. more celebratory than, there you go. like, But it wasn't for the French toast. Mad. It was definitely for the French toast. No, 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 no. French the French CJ's Eatery, Seattle. I think your name is Melissa, the lady that be serving me the fucking Bellinis. But listen, Tie in with me, bro. But listen, bro. Yeah. It wasn't for the French toast. The French toast There's no was a French byproduct toast. of your celebration. How long out. did it take you to drive to Seattle? That shit. I got there. I stayed the night in Oakland. And then I got there the next day. How long did it hours. take you to get to Seattle? Like a day. If I would have drove nonstop, it was a day. Home. And There's I stopped for no, the homegirl that was in Sacramento, too. There is no French I won't toast. drive to Seattle for a woman. Or, or for. How for, about a bag? How big is the bag? I don't know. Where, and then you got to ask, out. Let, that Let's talk about that. How big is the bag? To drive to Seattle? Yeah. I have to drive. I can't fly. No. Mm, I have to drive? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay, but see, yeah. see I'm you a literal drive. person. You got to drive. Okay, you got to drive. I'm a literal if person. You gotta drive, Do that's I physically bag. have to drive or I have to go by car? Yeah, you got to go by car. So, so you, I don't have to drive? No, nah, you can have somebody. Oh, it don't matter. That was going to whip. It don't matter then. Boom. It don't matter. Whatever the bag is. Oh, okay. Oh, so you a hustler then? No. No. How much the bag got to be for you to drive? For me to physically drive? Absolutely. What What am I doing? DJ, how long? The day. Hour. The, the, one hour set. Hour. I won't go for an hour set. It's the, not worth the it. The three hours, bro. It will be worth it oh, if for the, the bag is. Okay, for the money. <laughs> um, where like, w- is it? Is it a? I need to work longer than hours. Think is it? Is it a festival? Is it a club? Club. A club. And you get the French toast. So, so you can see what I'm talking nobody about. Nobody give a fuck about <laughs> so the French toast. You can see what I'm bro. talking about, bro. So it's I'm a one hour set at a club. One hour set at a club. One hour set at no. One hour set at a festival. I don't want to really do the festival like that, so I would charge more. Okay. Because uh, the festival, you got to yell a lot. I don't yell a lot. You, so do I'm you like, yell a lot? Yeah. They like, they like yelling. Why don't you just hire a yeller? <laughs> <laughs> you seem like the type of nigga that will hire a yeller. Jazzy Jeff hires a yeller. Jazzy Jeff got skills. <laughs> Have y'all had this conversation before? Why are these niggas laughing at me? No, I would say <laughs> if like, I no. have to physically drive, probably yeah. it had to be like, some some racks like upwards of twenty. Yeah. Oh, that's not five figures. Five figures. That's up, up, five that's figures. Up, up, upwards, that's upwards of twenty plus. Worse. But that's, that's for the gig, and yeah. our travel would have to be paid for. Yeah, all that yeah. shit. Yeah. And cool. then like, in what reality do you drive to Seattle? Yeah, like, no, why the flight is only three hours. Apparently, yeah. that's cap. No. He had a girl up there. Nah, I went with a little vibe. You came. I, I met her in Sac. In Sac, though. Did so you t- did you take it down? Bro, come on, bro. Come on, listen, tell me. Bro, listen, bro. Listen, not even to be like that. Okay, no, know. okay, say that. Come say on, that, man. But what I'm saying is, you went. I don't think you went for the French toast. I think you went for the adventure. I mean, I love Seattle, bro. It's a nice city. The Puget Sound is amazing. You're not but me also, wrong. but also though, I'm the type of nigga that's gonna just hop on the freeway, like. I think that weekend I also went to Vegas. I drove out there. I also be driving to San Diego just on the whim and shit, bro. Like, 
I go to San Diego, I got like seven favorite restaurants out there. Dirty Birds, Ho Dad, La Perla, Cocina, Make the Yeah, see, I don't engage in none of that activity. Yeah, nah, but it's cool, though. Like, you know, you go to new places, meet new people, eat new food, have new experiences and shit. I get it. But you no, know what the thing about there. you is, bro? Whatever, bro. You for everybody. <laughs> hey, low-key, I be outside, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I be outside. You got to give some kind of exclusivity so, like, everybody don't feel like you don't get this to anybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you tell me, hey, nice outfit, and I feel like you tell everybody nice outfit, it don't make me you feel said, good about what my What did outfit. you say earlier I said something to you, and you was like, man, you say that to everybody. I don't know, nigga. I, I just told you, <laughs> you for everybody. You just said everything you say. I just, mean, his, I, his, listen, his shoulder. listen, I'm not going to cap, bro. The goal is to do business with everybody, so you got to have a nice network. And then, you know, you think about something like this, bro. Like, today, today, I just, like, I had a gang of shit shaking, just having motion all day. And it's awesome to, like, just conclude it like this, you know what I'm saying, for it to culminate like this. And that's just, like, the type of person I am, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You go, like, just... I would, I would hate for your, um, what's the word? What's the, what's the word for enthusiasm? nice? Enthusiasm? Energy? No, you're a nice guy, but oh. I would hate for that to be perceived. Yes, you're nice to everybody. Hey, what's Ladies up, bro? Happy, happy, whatever day of the week it is. <laughs> you know what I'm time. saying? This nigga says it all the time, right? Oh, and then, but like, but I would hate for that to be received like, huh, he don't mean it. He just says that to anybody he talks to. Everybody do say that. I mean, I think that most people are skeptics. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to go into most situations, most people are going to have like, these preconceived notions about you. And that's in any situation. And I think that all you got to do, though, is just stay true to yourself. You got big homies? Nah, I mean, I got people that I look up to. But, like, mm-hmm. most of the niggas that I, like, jumped off the porch with or was outside with, like, is my contemporary. You got you big know homies? What I'm like, Define big homies. People you go to for guidance yes. when you don't understand. Yes. And I think that is the biggest asset that you have honestly when i've been when i did my research on you i know when i asked you that question i already knew the answer i know because i've heard you say this happened and then i called this person hmm. and it does da, 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 like your radio big homie is fuzzy hmm. in theory in 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 reality who is it i mean it's a couple it's a i have a tribe hmm. who are they hmm. salas fuzz big boy Charlemagne, and debbie Right, mm. those are the people you Debbie, just drop lines to Debbie you Brown. don't understand? Debbie oh. Brown, yeah. When you don't understand, that's who you hit? For all intents and purposes, though, that's the peop- those are the people I consult right. most of the time for whatever is going on. Right, and um, in a few endeavors that I have, besides acting, acting, I got big homies. Mm. But everything else, I've never had a big homie. Right. And I think that's a commonality between that me and him share is that we haven't had that guidance and that's what hinders us. And I think that is a big reason for the success that you have accumulated thus far. It could be different, it could be different. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, I agree with you, but I think that that's where the chip on my shoulder comes from is the lack of that, Mm. not having resources, like coming up. Yeah. Like when I was early 20, I didn't have that. Like me, glasses and pool, we was just figuring it out. Like we didn't have nobody showing us the game teaching us this, mm-hmm. going over, con- like, we didn't know. We was just, it took us 10 years to figure this shit out on our well, own. Also, big homies would put a chip on your shoulder, too. Because the wrong you, ones, yes. No, the right ones. Nah. Chips, on, you think chips on your shoulders are a bad thing? Yes. I do not. I think you. No, no, I, I use it as a positive. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying, the actual connotation for the chip on your shoulder is a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right, I get right, it. Right, right. No, what I think is that used correctly, the yes. chip on your shoulder is a is a tool for power. Definitely was fueled me. Right, I, and you are an example of a chip on your shoulder done right. Unfortunately, there are more fools than geniuses. I agree. And that complex of having a chip on your shoulder being a necessity uh, is is widely viewed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I agree and, with that. And more people have used it wrong than correctly. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? I agree with that. Bro, were you around glasses at the Cash Money Young Money? Before that. No shit. So you was around when they Black Wall Street. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. So what was that whole time like being around that way? Um, it was crazy because it wasn't no it wasn't nothing really going on out here like that. Like the, the labels I call it the no man's land in the music industry in LA, right? It's after game and Dre kinda had they falling out before the new boys. We didn't have nothing. 
There was that void. It was just nothing going it was on. A super like super void. We had. The, we had High Dollar and Gorilla Black, what they was doing. Oh, that nigga High Dollar. They had, they had one of the biggest that. songs on the West, and they were still doing shows. Well, we was doing shows. It was this one place called the Copacabana over there in Long Beach by the Parwoods that everybody was doing shows, whether you had a huge song or you was just starting. And that's because it was just nothing out here. The labels packed up and left after the Death Row era. The radio stations went pop. They would start, I mean, not stations, the station went, and they were playing all of the LMFAO and the party rock shit and then thank God for the hyphen movement because after the hyphen movement we got the jerk era and after that we got ratchet and then we, t- we turned we was back up right. but that no man's land between Game and Dre and the new boys it was dust out here like you couldn't get nothing going nobody was fucking with us when nobody pulling up bringing all that bringing niggas out for the shows none of that was happening mm-hmm. you know and that's where we all came up us glasses TDE Nipsey like everybody we all came out of that problem we all came up under that wave because my favorite uh song from that time was that glasses and wayne that in the club sort of oh that was called haters oh that shit was crazy but see the thing is before like this is way before that because we did that deal after we did the we got a deal with sony because mike lynn who who signed game to the aftermath Mm -hmm. mike lynn started his own label at sony then when he glasses was the first artist he signed to his own label but then Sony closed their urban division, so we got to walk with everything. Masters, all that shit. And that's then hard. and then that's when one oh um, Mac that's when Mac Tim was like, I wanna do this deal with y'all with, with glasses with cash money. So he took glasses to stunner and we did the deal and then but that 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 that's Wait, where I y'all got, came from the Mac Tim lineage of cash money too? Yeah. That's actually hard. That nigga that uh I think it was Banger Ball, his album that he had with Cash Money, that shit was hard. It had like hella features with all of them niggas like all of the hot boys and yeah. shit, like, you know, um, I feel like that was a formidable West Coast project at that time. So for y'all to be associated with that, that's dope to me. It was fire, but I, I got most of my most of my game though being around Wayne and Stunner. Like, bro, that that shit was because I was. You got to think. What I games was, you get? I was around, bro. Think about this. This is I was at the Lollipop video shoot. Shut uh, up, nigga. I was with Static Major, rest what, in peace. What? Bro, I'm telling you, I was there. What did you it. think when you first heard that song? Listen, listen to me, bro. I was there. We shot the video in Vegas at one of the Maloof brothers' houses. Okay? If Who's the know, Maloof brother? The Maloof brother, bro. The Maloofs own the Palms Casino in Vegas. Say that. The Sacramento Kings. Like, they billionaires, mm-hmm. right? And we shot it at the... That, if you watch the Lollipop video shoot right now, I mean, the Lollipop video, Lil Wayne, that's the broke brother. They tease him like he broke. Mm-hmm. That's his house. Right. Right. So, All of rap was stunning in that video too. So, and if you re- if you watch the video, they, they playing with Palms chips from the hotel. They brought the they brought a, a the armed all that with the chips like it was crazy. And you got to think I'm broke. My checking account overdrafted thirty five dollars because that that was the fee. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just around and I'm seeing this shit, and that's kind of one of the things that changed my life. This is, and then I watched Wayne's work ethic firsthand. Like I saw Lil Wayne when it was no Drake, it was no Nicki. This is Wayne before YMCMB. Right. Yeah. This is just Carter three cover of Rolling Stone, the greatest rapper alive. And I saw this nigga in the studio like he was broke. I saw him do it my own. eyes. I saw, what, that do to you? I saw what you think it did. I saw him go from shooting. The, we was on set like this, shooting a video. He was like, how long I got Asked the director. Oh, uh, Jeff shot to Jeff, Jeff Panzer. He would say, oh, you got 30 minutes. We're going to read and, you know, do the other scene. We're going to set up. He's like, all right. So he go back to the studio. I'm back in the bus and record another song. Like, I saw that shit with my own eyes. Then I sat on Birdman's bus one time, and t- we, me and Glass was talking to Birdman, and I saw a stunt account, $100 bills for 45 minutes straight. <laughs> How much was it? <laughs> Nick, I don't know. <laughs> he counted hundred dollar bills and, and stunt it on half and I saw that shit and you just just think about it. And this. also I feel like he counts fast. It was like this. Oh god. But trip but trip this though, bro. I saw this shit and I'm like twenty five. I don't know how old I'm twenty I don't know how old I was. But imagine be having and at this time when I'm sitting on his bus, I had thirteen dollars in my pocket. Mm. And I had a and I was gonna go home and eat ramen, right? And I'm sitting on this man's bus, and I'm watching him count 45 minutes of $100 bills. And he's like, yeah, young, we finna go fuck this off today. This today money. He's like, you can get it too, my nigga. You just got to get out here and woo, like, straight you up. You ask that nigga for one of them? No. Then I saw, then I saw, <laughs> then I saw him, like, go through his jewelry like a kid playing with Legos. He was just, 
moving like like one stone changed my family life type shit. And I'm just seeing him. He like, yeah, Rufus, where's my? And he just moving shit. And I'm just like, they live in a different. It's life. different. It's bro. So what you think did? What you think that did to my mentality? Like that's why. That's another reason why I'm so. I've seen it before. Mm-hmm. I saw exactly what it is. I saw. The, I saw what it looked like, and I saw what it takes to maintain it. And so I don't, that's why I'm like, bro, spend, I don't buy shoes, I don't buy clothes, I don't, it's not, it's also because I'm cheap and, frib- uh, and frugal, but it's also because I just, I know what's what's possible, you right. know what I'm saying? Right, for sure. Bro, going back to the lollipop uh, shit real quick, when I first heard that song, bro, I, I had thoughts and I'll share them with you after. What did you think when you first heard that I song? I didn't know like, what the fuck was going on. Right. I thought Wayne lost his mind. Right, nigga, bro. Because I'm coming off a of hustler music. Thank you, bro. And I didn't know what the Carter 2 was fire, and I was just like, bro, what the fuck? Like, nigga, Manic, so first, first of all, Carter 3 was the, the first project without Manny. Right. And so I I was like, I thought that was a mistake, because I'm like, nigga, I, Manny Fresh low-key my top three producers yeah, of all time. Fuck. His like, son hard, too. Who so, to? hold on. So, when, when, I, when the Carter 3 first, like, hit, I was like, oh, like, he went... He went for it. Right. He took chances. He took a risk, and it paid off for him. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But it that just was a bait there. It was just like one of them things where I didn't. Un- I, I don't think I was ready for it. No, but that was the best album too. Right. But when but now it's my favorite yeah, album. Yeah, and Lollipop is crazy. Like now, as history has shown, like it's one of Wayne's biggest songs. You know, Ye yeah, hopped on it. They did the whole shit. It's iconic, right? But at the time, though, I had no idea, bro. I, was, I didn't know what the fuck yeah, I was listening bro. to, especially when we was at the video. Because, you know, that was when they first started to do the video and release the song in the video at the same time. But remember I, back in the day, we'll drop the song and you get yeah, the video a couple it, months yeah. later. Right. This is when the video, I'm just, I'm hearing it for the first time at the video shoot. I'm like, what the fuck is this? This nigga Static Major playing the, the, the shit in the, and it's like a waterfall. And it's like, what the fuck am I watching right now? Then he had Delicious pull up and the big ass, and it was a stupid limo, like, and it was just a lot. It was like a circus. Right. And I didn't understand it. But I, that, that was the point, though. Yeah. That was okay. the point. That shit changed rap, bro, you know forever. Anything? I want to see your reaction to this. Now that you said that, I feel like that's where um, Battle Bag Rad messed up with Vintage and Adventurous. I feel like he took too long to put the video out. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I feel like that song was so amazing. Still and is. did. And still does. Still go so much at at any outing in Los Angeles. Facts. It's still a LA. But it's a LA. The way yeah, they we'll put it, the be. way they put it out, took too long for the out for the world that we're in. Well, like, I, I thought like that should have been Billboard Top Forty. I don't know, maybe. But in their defense, people don't know, bro. Yeah. Right. A lot of people don't know. They just do them. They do music, and then sometimes they 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 and then they also don't know what to what to know. Mm-hmm. It, the key, a lot of a lot of key. I mean, a lot of the keys to life lie in the questions, and some people just don't know the right questions to ask. I do not know what the fuck you just said. My question is, explain. <laughs> a lot of the keys in life lie in the right questions to ask. Okay. It, it, it lie in the right questions. You said it a, twice, and I understand. A lot of people don't know what question to ask. Like people, like artists come to me all the time, like, man, I want you to fuck with me. I'll be like, all right, for sure, what you want me to do? They'd be like, they look, they got, they be looking. I just told you, nigga, I want you to fuck with me. What does that mean? See, I don't, see, I make you do articulate. Do you fuck with me? No. I want you to, though. What do you want me to do? Fuck with me. Do, what do you want me to do? You like me? What do you want me to do? I want you to fuck with me. Okay, what do you want me to do? See, I'm not. I'm not one. Of, we can do this. We can do that for 45 minutes. Nice. So when I go yeah, on Instagram I live, just bird man, I love just it. bird man. When I go on Instagram live with these artists, I make them because of what this is the problem. It's not. Oh, I want you to play your. Uh, I want you to play my record on the radio. I can't play what I want on the radio. Oh, I want you to host my mixtape. I don't host mixtapes. Oh, I want you. Okay, so now that we've gotten all of that out the way, what is it that you actually need or want from me? I would like you to help me get more exposure to the world. That's what you're supposed to say. Okay, now. Now that you've eliminated all those options, that made more sense for me to say. So what I'm saying to you, that's, but it comes in from in the form of a mentality shift. And that's what I be trying to get artists to understand. Stop thinking one way. Mm-hmm. Play my shit on the radio. No, I can't play what I want on the radio. Will that ever change? Will DJs ever be able to play what they want on the radio? Some DJs like, can. I just don't, I got to report to the white people. Like terrestrial radio is what I Some mean. DJs can play whatever they want. Yeah. I'm just not one of them. 
No shit, bro. What, you don't believe me? No, like, like, I mean, I guess, yeah, there are, like, Atlanta DJs and shit that could, like... I understand what you're asking me. So you don't believe that I... That I no, no, I'm not saying that I don't believe you. What I'm saying is... I didn't. It didn't dawn on me that there are DJs in terrestrial radio that could play that what they want. Oh you know yeah, they, they exist. They exist. Yeah. Can you give me one? Um, in LA they don't. Know. In LA, that could play anything they want. No, nah, that don't exist. Yeah, not in no, LA. No, in LA I don't know. Nah, if yeah. you can't, nobody can. If you and Charisma can't, nobody can. I don't have a comment. <laughs> I believe that. I can see that. I can see I can see you taking a silent route to that. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's move on to something else. I have something I want to ask you. Um, I heard you once say that the representation that Nip had was a big reason why his death hit so hard. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So what does that do for you? What 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 is the representation you would like to be perceived as? My own? You. Um, I just want to leave it better than I found it. The I world, the game, the industry, mm-hmm. people, my family, real estate, business. Yeah. Campsite rules. Black leave people. It better than you found it. I want to leave it better than I found it. You're in real estate? Yeah. Okay. How's AMC doing? No, I'm not in real estate like that. Like, I don't have an investment portfolio. I know. You, I, that was a separate question. Yeah. I know that you were in AMC. I'm talking about stocks. I know. Um, I wasn't in one, but I just do. Are real, you still in it? No. Smart man. They made that money. Yeah, I was in AMC, but AMC, that was, just, that was one of the things where that I was just, a lick. Yeah, that's all it was. It wasn't like nothing that's crazy. But I like, I like stocks, but... Um, I think to answer your question, I want people to remember. I want people to remember the message, not necessarily how I delivered it. Mm-hmm. I think, I think you are succeeding in the best part. Thank you. I want people to, to rem- I want people to understand the value in education, understand mm-hmm. the value in intellect, and understand the value in, in its power and the mentality. Mm-hmm. It's not about the bag. Like, we, people always say chase the bag. We say chase the relationships mm-hmm. and chase the information. I've never heard I've never heard you seem to be a money-oriented person. Money don't move me. What moves you? Information. Oh, and you get moved a lot, nigga. We live in the information age. You would be surprised. Mm-hmm. I deal with a lot of morons. But... Yeah, I can see that, too. Um... Information and I think the quest for more, like mm-hmm. that's what moves me because I'm not really, I don't get excited by a lot of shit. Like the things that people excite by, I don't get excited. You I'm see, you you a very monotone ass nigga, bro. I know. <laughs> you like that? I do. Yeah, I feel that. I like it because especially it, in the world you're in. I like it because people just be, they have this. This here, I'm gonna be honest with you. I would hope so. I don't like. Sometimes I don't like the fact that I'm a DJ. Because of the perception of what people think of me. So when I go somewhere, they be like, oh, we got DJ Head coming. They give me a microphone. They have a bar. And they be like, you know, like. Get people to go to the bar. Yeah. Okay, yo, go to the bar. Yeah. It's time to get to go. I'm not, I am not Dougie Fresh, my nigga. Yeah. I, do I look like Dougie Fresh to you? Right. Like, I don't care if people buy drinks. Right. So that be my problem. Is I, I need f- more fucks to give. Uh-huh. But my fucks that, that are given are in other places. Like, I just. Um, I'm a chairman now on the, on the board for the Boys and Girls Club. That shit moves me. Right? Why? Because, because it's providing opportunity for people that black, black and brown kids that come from these same communities I come from that probably have access to shit that I didn't have access to. I love Leave it. it better than I found it. I love that. What else? Where Where else are your fucks? Um, food. And... What's your favorite food? It just depends on the day, bro. I like seafood. Asian... All, all variations of Asian food and Mexican food. Um... And oh, tech. Mm. Like I want, I really want like to go to. I really want to go to Cupertino and get a guided tour through the Apple campus. That would make my day. It's called Cupertino. I'm, in, in I've only seen it spelled. Yeah. I've never heard it out Cupertino, loud. Cupertino, California. Yep. I thought it was Cupertino. No. Um, I believe you. 
the Google campus. Like yeah, I'm, I, I know, I'm, I know what's there. So like, I know what the fuck go on over there. <laughs> <laughs> I never. I want to do out like loud. that's the type of shit I want to do. Like I want to. I'm a nerd for real. Like I'm really not cool. I just, I just, it look cool. Nah, but that me. shit wavy, but bro. Like, nigga, just think about how much bread them people make. Like, when you really sit up and think about electrical engineers, engineering, shit like that, civ- civil engineers, like, they make hella bread, yeah, you know Minimum what I'm wage like, is 125 you, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So, like. If you're trash. So and, like, they, and, they, and they do it in flip flops. Right. And that's the thing that, like, you know, that's encouraging the youth, like, like, you know. That's why we are on the tracksuit episode of my <laughs> well, yeah. No, I just started some shit called What Dress Code for that reason. Because I, I just, I'm a rebel without yeah. a cause, kind of, but. Mm-hmm. Well, your cause is your, your, your own selfish company. I want people, no, I want people. You know what it is? I'm going to be honest with you. I've probably never said this before publicly. I want people to be as comfortable with themselves as I am with me. I get that. And you will put yourself in uncomfortable positions to show other people that they should want to be comfortable? Exactly. I want I want girls to pull up, no makeup, and feel just as beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want niggas to pull up in their tracksuit and feel like they got a million dollars. What did you feel like wearing today? What you mean? No, that's what I'm saying. That's the, oh, that's, yeah. That's that's, but that's what I'm saying. And I, that's, I, because I know, like what you said, it comes off as arrogance, right? Right. But it's not arrogance. What it is is it's a it's an inflated amount of confidence in who I am, what I'm about. More importantly, what I'm not about, or what I'm not with, right? Mm-hmm. And I want other people to experience that. Right. So I project that outward. You know the the instant thing that I thought of was um, was 2017. I was like making more money than I had ever made before, right? Mm-hmm. Like I was living four blocks away from the Staples Center. I had like the the, the swanky ass apartment and shit. You feel mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. My best life, nigga. I dressed bummier than I had ever <laughs> dressed before, nigga. I was going months, nigga. Like it would be four months without a haircut, nigga. I'd be like, I think I'm trying to grow my hair out right now. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It doesn't matter. It is. I don't give a fuck, right? I even had a homeboy, him, Evan, was like, Hey man, you need to start dressing. Like where you live, I was like, fuck that shit, nigga. I don't give a fuck about when nothing. Bro, I saw the nobody got to say. I saw the realest this. I saw the realest shit. I don't know who said it, but they said I had saved it in my phone because it was a meme. But they said that remember the people in in, in suits work for the people in sweats. Mm. Big facts. Damn, shit, bro. that's crazy. So that's that's kind of like my whole thing. Real shit. Oh, so you trying to make sure you stay in the sweats? I, I don't want to wear anything else. Why would why would we wear anything but sweats? Mm-hmm. Unless you're into fashion. Right. What's the most comfortable thing you could possibly wear? Suits are extremely uncomfortable. And the, and the problem is, who created this? See, now this gets real fucked up deep if we get what we're going It through. goes back to slavery. Who decided <laughs> that we're supposed to wear this? And who made this professional? Europeans. Some white person came up with it one day and everybody just got in. Right. Just so like, why don't you wear suits? You secretly fuck with white people. They saved your life. Not enough to wear a suit. <laughs> oh, okay. I fuck with them. Not enough to wear a suit. I don't even own a suit. You will say shout out to white people, but you won't say. I don't own you won't a, suit. Wear a suit. I will wear a suit, but on under under certain terms and conditions. Like if you were like playing a role on the TV and they gave you a suit. Sure. Right. I would also wear a suit. I like I participate in the bullshit, but I want all of us involved to know that this is some bullshit. Right. So like if, like if, like a wedding, right? Right. Like thing. I don't want to go. I hate weddings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to come to a wedding. Yeah. If I'm DJing, cool. But then the, the, now I'm staff, so I can wear what I want to wear. Right? But Wait, just you the, don't wear suits to weddings. I don't go to weddings. And when I'm I talking d- about working. What if I'm DJ? Oh no, I don't wear suits. I'm DJ wedding. Oh, that's a Did that's you? a bar. That's a unique bar of yours. No, I don't. I don't wear. I don't have a suit, bro. I don't own one. Go get one, man. For what? For your wedding. Whose wedding am I going to? <laughs> People that are paying you to be there. If they're paying me to be there, yeah. they hired me, right? Yeah. Which means I'm the help. So right. I don't have to be in costume. I get it. I get what you're saying. I'm just hired help. Damn. Yeah, you're, you're about this life. If you really want me there, just know I ain't going to be there in a suit. Th- here's the that. problem, bro. I love it. Here's the problem, right? I, that's I will wear a suit upon request, but then you have to make it make sense to me. Uh, Okay, you need a, a request and a paragraph, an explanation yeah. paragraph. Yeah, Damn. because the thing is, here's the thing. This is what I want you to say to me, right? I want you to say, yo, head, I want you to wear a suit. I'll be like, why? 
I'm because I've been conditioned my whole life by white people to understand that, <laughs> that this means something of significance, and I want you to participate in the bullshit with me. I got you, my nigga. I go get a suit tomorrow. And but also, but you're gonna but also, but you're, hold on. You but to you're not gonna go on the mic and acknowledge. No no no. But you're going you. to live in that truth. You want me to participate? You gonna stand in that shit? Mm, that is some kiss the ring shit. Bro. No, it ain't no kiss the ring. You made them niggas kiss the ring. That's not kissing the, the ring. That's just the truth. Tell me, tell me, <laughs> tell me what it is. It's the truth. Why do you wear suits? To uh, to to because uh, other people like it. I don't like that shit. <laughs> so then, why are you wearing it? Because other people like it. Okay, other people like. I all, get bitches in suits. Okay, there you go. I'm not moved by that. You don't like bitches? No, I'm not moved by it. <laughs> oh. I'm not moved by it. You like them, but I you ain't going to can... sit still and like them. Yes. I'm going to get them or I'm not get them. It's going to be Tuesday. Either yeah, way. Either way, they're on Instagram. Either way, it's going to be Tuesday. That's how I live my life. Right. You didn't want bitches on a Tuesday? It's not about that. What I'm telling you is that, it's don't, not about moving. that doesn't motivate me at all. I see. Women so. don't motiv- motivate me at all. Not in the least bit. Me. That's not that's not new to me, nor does it motivate me because that's a fleeting thing. Women are not fleeting. Women are women are definitely fleeting. Man, no. That's why that's why your turnover women are fleeting? High, bro, I no, gotta listen, agree with that's bro, why your turnover like, rate is so high. Up. What that's why your turnover rate is so high. What's my turnover rate? Whatever it is. Nah, my turnover rate is solid. I don't even know what that means, but I think it's on point. <laughs> bro, bro, I ain't gonna lie to you. Just to speak on the women topic, like y'all got love women, and women fucked is up. Like, ple- no, no, women, and women are is, not. Women are be fleeting, on point bro. always. I mean, no, it's <laughs> always on point, bro. But it's like that shit can come and go. And I don't see the- no fleeting. No, y'all listen, bro. Just, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know, no. Bro. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so part of it, like I said, is knowing the right question to ask. What does that mean? This is what it what means. What does women are fleeting? This is what it means. Women are depreciating asset. Fuck that. No. They no, uh, not appreciate. It. Look, I'm talking about, no, no, no. I'm not talking about the, the the woman species. I'm talking about in the way that you just said it, in the context you used it, right? You don't like bitches? That means that women in abundance, I'm assuming. Oh, you're talking about them last fuck objects. What do you mean? I was just talking about women. Okay. What I'm telling you is the ability to collect women the yeah. way you're the way you're saying I wasn't saying that what are you saying I wasn't talking about getting bitches I was talking about women in general acknowledging me as a nice looking person when I was talking about suits so then like, you need to articulate that because you sound crazy so I sound crazy I feel like you sound <laughs> crazy you talking about women are depreciating or something no or fleeting, I'm fleeting fleeting I'm sorry what I'm saying you're, is you're because you're, you're really it, particular about your words women are fleeting I said fuck that no they're not what I'm saying is in Okay, well, I misunderstood what you were saying, right? <laughs> so what I'm saying is, in the way that men commonly refer to bitches, right? Right, I get the cliches. I'm the sorry. The cliche is... I'm sorry, because the, the, the context of me using bitches kind of warped the whole perception of what correct. I'm saying. And I, I get that. Okay, so what I'm saying is, when, 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 when men rest their ego on the collection of women in that way. Right. That's a depreciating asset. That's a black thing, too. Why do we like that's not a black thing. numbers? I feel like we like collecting That's not a black thing. That's just a male thing. But when like you look at it so like insane. women are Pokemon and you collecting all of them, right? When you look at it that way, yeah. that's a depreciating asset because it holds actual, no, it has no real no value. value. Agreed. Agreed. But now, the connection right, to a woman is worth something. Okay. That's what I was going to say. Now, if you like investing in a dynamic where it's like, yo, we doing business or something together then it's like yeah nah it is an appreciating value or if even if it's like yeah like we tied in and i'm you know building with you or something like that like then just it's wanting a lot of numbers is a fleeting asset okay i i totally yeah. understand that. that's <laughs> it liability but like, right but like our particular person is huh. not a fleeting thing in the right instance assets for over over liabilities right so. quality versus quantity essentially i mean literally too i guess yeah all right, so the the name Coast Guard, right? I feel like okay. Here's what someone want to clarify. Well, who was it before you? Oh shit, I don't know. Who did you know was the Coast Guard before you? I don't know. It wasn't like Dre or something. No, nah, I don't think nobody. The only person I know that used that before was Topic, the homie Topic, he a rapper. But that was like a mixtape series I think he was doing. Okay, and I don't mean the literal title. I'm a literal person. So literally, I'm telling you, I did not mean the literal <laughs> title. Okay. I meant 
Wait, wait, you think you are literally the guard of the coast? No. <laughs> so then, what? Oh, come on, all right, hold on, let's reset, reset. You're, you're, how much percent of you is literal? 80%. Okay, cool. Okay, we can, we, we can identify there if yeah. you can understand I'm there too. 80%. All right. Who was the coast guard before you? I don't know. Remember I told you, I'll tell you when I don't know some shit. Yeah, okay, I would like you to think. I did think about it. And you still don't know? No. I've thought about it before today. Maybe you need more time to think. If I've I thought about it before today. Okay, who, who are who are your candidates? I don't have any candidates. I don't know. Nobody I don't have, is a candidate. For no, I'm saying I don't. I don't know that, that that's what they wanted to be called. Mine didn't. I didn't start calling myself that because it sounded cool or I thought of it. It was a cool name. It came from an actual thing, like a conversation. You had guarded somebody at the coast. No, it came from. A, it's a metaphor. It's, it's hip hop. I'm very so, aware, and I want to use that metaphor and say who had that assignment before you. I don't know. You tell me. I don't. I don't know. I right? say like Felly. Like Felly. There, there's your uh, candidate. Like, like. Do you uh, agree with that? I don't know. Like, uh. <laughs> oh, I Mr. Mean, literal. I mean, Mr. Big literal. Boy. Okay. It, uh, just say you're politically correct. I'm not politically correct. I know. You, in, in instances. No. You, you know how to avoid drama. No, I don't care about drama. You know, nigga. Was, was it yes or no to Felly, though? Like, you just don't know? I don't know. I would have to either. It, it would either be, I, I don't know. think about it more. No, no, because the thing is, I don't know what he's done. Like, the, I, I try to avoid situations to speak on other people when I don't have information. I don't know what he did behind the scenes. Okay. All I know was was shown to us. Okay. Based on what was shown to us, no. But I don't know because he could have, like, we do a lot of shit. I do a lot of shit behind the scenes that nobody knows about. Okay. So, that came from those things, mm -hmm. not necessarily what I'm showing on Instagram or talking about on the radio. Or whatever. So you got a lot of other like Nip and Jay Z songs that you weren't named on. Because I got a lot of stuff. Just to give context to the world, I'm sorry, anybody that sees this, that was a big production credit for you because Huge. you put the you put the Vicky Vicky's on that song. Huge right? production credit. Shout right? out to shout out to 1500 and, right. and my and, boy Archie Davis. And so like what I'm imagining you're saying is that is an instance that happens to you a lot. And you're not looking for the recognition that you got on that, but it is there in a lot of There are of people who have made millions of dollars off the back of something that I've done or Silas has done. Mm -hmm. There are people who have huge record deals off the back of something that I have done for them, Silas has done, my team has done. I have a whole tribe of people who pour into this city and people that we fuck with. How does that make you feel with the amount of recognition that you get? I don't, I don't look, I don't, I don't care because I don't do it for the recognition. I just do it because I want to leave it better than I found it. Mm. Okay, so you're happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know why it's confusing? It's because he already told me this, but right. I see it in action. This nigga just has the most monotone <laughs> face always. Like, like you can't tell. Yeah. I'm ecstatic hey. about that shit. <laughs> Them niggas is rich as fuck. You know it's called. They, they, they got a bigger house than me than from what I did. That's true. I'm very happy. That's true. I'm in a rental. I'm in a rental. Are there but any not, artists? And I'm very happy. That you but. working with behind the scenes right now that are emerging or something that we may not know of like to kinda like speak on what you were just saying. It's a lot of shit you do behind, behind the, the scenes. scenes. Yeah. I mean I've talked to everybody. No, nah, but uh, speak on an emergent artist that we may not know about or we may not have been exposed to yet. If, you know, you got somebody like, or even somebody you listening to that really ain't broke yet. I don't and know. And we could, do we, could, <laughs> we could double back on it too, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, if at some point, you know what I'm saying? Well, the thing is, most of the people that I'm talking to, I try to help them, like me and Silas both. Oh, what's... What's the uh, the, what's the guy on Mac and Co, Silas? The singer. Jay Ward. He hard. Mm. Jay Ward. Jay Ward mm. hard. Jay Ward is hard. That's I hard. fuck with him. Man. You know what I'm saying? I like him. What's his what's his what's his BPM comfort zone? It's up there. It's about a hundred. He he his song the his songs that you vibe with is it it's around a hundred? Yeah. Okay. He got he got like that's he LA, got a couple that's of, LA he got a couple of joints, bro. Like and I I like him. It's a dude named Jay Million that's mm -hmm. with with Blast with Eagle Team. Yeah, he's incredible. Mm -hmm. I don't use that word lightly. Um, it's a couple of people that's coming up that I fuck with. You know what I'm saying? That people don't know like they won't know like that until it's like oh shit like he, you know he sold out the Novo. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm okay with that though. Nice. People wouldn't fuck with a lot of people like that before. You know what I'm saying? That that I fuck with. 
do you still fuck with like indie shit? Like I know like when you were in your homegrown days and when y'all were still emerging, you was like going everywhere. Like do y'all still be going to like indie showcases and shit like that? Or even do you even check your DMs from indie artists and shit? It depends. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's not. Got but you. most of the time it's me. Mo- I, I for the most part handle my own social. Yeah. But a lot of, sometimes it do be other people. Like, but um, the uh, checking the DMs not really because I'm not. I don't hide from people. I'm one of the most right. as y'all know. I'm one of the most accessible people doing what I do. Right. Right. Fact. So I find it disrespectful when people treat me like they treat everybody else. Right. If I'm not like everybody else, mm. my email is literally on my Instagram. <laughs> Up until a month ago, what was it, a month ago, two months ago? About a month ago is when I changed it and go to Solace now. Mm. For the last 10 years. Why are you doing that to Solace? For, for That's the, fucking, <laughs> listen, listen, anybody that want to reach me, my email's on my shit. Listen, bro, but this, go to me, but this is what you got to understand. <laughs> for the last 10 years, my email has come straight to my phone. Uh, 10 years. Mm. So all you would you have turn to, them notifications off. All you would have to do is fucking email the, whatever you want to get whatever you're trying to get to me yeah. but people don't this is the problem they won't invest in themselves them how'd you get me here Salas. you emailed Salas. right right what the fuck are we talking about right no no and then also with so the pop outs are y'all still popping out like i mean do you i go i go i go out and i and i and i and i'll see certain things sometimes mm-hmm. i don't go to a lot of showcases just because i don't have a lot of time and i work right. nights yeah no nah, of course like i work at night right you did a um you did a Halloween party this year, right? Yeah. In Lamar? Yeah. You fucked our shit up. No. <laughs> <laughs> we threw an event the same night, nigga, oh, down man. the street, bro. Oh, our no. shit, our shit was. Oh, no, 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 no. Our shit was subpar because of you. That's not because of me. Not. Yeah. It I, was. I, and you know what? They yeah. booked me. Yeah. It, it wasn't my event. It One was thing. Because of of you. Nah, what I was going to say <laughs> but is, nah, though, you get what I'm saying. Y- yeah, yeah, like, you know, the city, bro, on uh, Halloween, they love hella you. motion. But I, and we still had hella artists come out, incredible lineup and shit. And I think that, you know, um, just irrespective of how y'all night was, we still had a lit night. Like, it was you know cool. what I'm saying? Like, it was cool. Yeah, no, no, I, For the I, amount of work we put in, because, like, our events, like, we, we put them out. And we put extra effort towards this one. It was going to be ladies night at Halloween, you know what I'm saying? And then we found out, hey, I got a party a block away. That wasn't my party. It was theirs. They booked me. They I, know, just, I understand. Yeah. I understand. I know what you're saying. But, like, in our perception is, oh, shit, it's a head party a block away. Fuck, I feel that's, that might fucking suck. But, and, I mean. And we did. We did. We I think did that was Dre's perspective. My perspective was, it's, like, 10 million people in L.A., Agreed. Nigga, we could get three hundred. We could peel off three hundred. Yeah, that's more of a you know problem mean? than a me problem. Yeah, that, I didn't. That, that I was kind of how it was I was. It was definitely my so. problem. Yeah, yeah. I didn't do enough about it either. Facts. It, but I wanted to tell you how <coughs> much I uh, go ahead. Who was your favorite art artist that night? I don't know. You don't remember. Nah, man. Okay, Damn. my bad. My bad. All right, <laughs> cut that part out. <laughs> I fuck with you. We keep, but I just wanted to let you know how much I support your title as the Coast Guard. Oh, word, word. For sure. Like, because it was one of those things that when you hear it, it makes sense and it works. Like, you know, like, why this nigga? Nah, that's definitely the nigga that needs to be that. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But like I can't think of anyone else that deserves that title in this day and age. No, I like, appreciate I, that. I can I can definitely compare you to somebody in the past. That's why I asked you the question. Yeah. And you and you and you gave me a literal <laughs> answer. You know. <laughs> yeah. That I don't know, and I don't know either. So I guess you were telling the truth, but again, there's nobody in today's climate that deserves that title. I'm excited to see who gets it after you, even though I don't think your run as the Coast Guard is anywhere near done. But I feel like I would bet the house that somebody will take that title as soon as you're done with it. And it's something that you created. And I and I applaud you for minting that. Thank you. You get what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't even think about it like that, to be honest. It, didn't even come, it, didn't, it wasn't even that much thought that went into it it was just it just came from it was just a witty thing it, it was yeah witty. it was witty and it came from like a conversation about like quality control and and who's actually doing work to ensure 
that our sh- our culture out here is is policed in the right way. Not yeah. like not like saying that I'm in I'm an authority, but, but you I are. didn't I didn't see nobody else like going like songs that y'all might hear that come out. Mm. I don't even I don't, I I pull up before they turn them into the label. Right. You know what I'm saying? Before the label gets the records, I'm pulling up like, hey, bro, this shit gonna work in the South. This shit gonna work in the Midwest. It's not gonna do nothing on the East Coast. It's not gonna do nothing here. This is how you do it. Matter of fact, let's sync it. Call your people, tell them you want to put this on the soundtrack, blah, blah, blah. I didn't see nobody doing those types of things. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of came from that type of thing. Right. You just understood You understood a perspective that these creatives did not understand. Right. You know what I'm saying? You were able to help I'm in, them and I'm in these apply buildings. that part mm-hmm. hey, because you're there. I'm in these buildings. You're speaking because I'm there and I hear it. I know what I know what these white people is looking for. Right. I know what they I know who they paying. I know what they paying. I know all of this shit. So it's like on on dedication. You know, you get the information, go back to the turf and give it right back. Right. I got you this. This says I'm the Coast Guard. Mind your own business. Mm, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> That's funny. Let's go. Right, for sure. <laughs> let's go. Like, cause I, I swear to you. That's funny. Mark my that. words. Mark my words. When you're done with that title, there is going to be someone who inherits it. I didn't hopefully think about they, like that. Hopefully they ask. I, I, I didn't think about it before you said you were going to be here. But I didn't realize how natural a title that was for you. You know what I'm saying? And how much it fit. Like when some shit just worked, nobody questioned it. You know what I'm saying? It just okay. Well, that's how life is now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the coast has embraced you as their guard. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And like, if you think about it, like once you said it, I feel like you didn't get anybody. Well, what? Huh? Mm -hmm. No, because you have already established yourself as that person. I feel that. You know what I'm saying? I accept that. Appreciate you. Mm. Thank you. Thank yes, you so much. For sure. Good shit, Where the hell did my fucking cue cards go? Because <laughs> I have some shit I want to just ask you before we get out of here. Because okay. you've you've done a great deal. And you embracing the acknowledgement of what I just told you felt like a really good ending to this episode. But <laughs> let me check my cue cards to make sure there wasn't something I did not want you to get out of here <laughs> before leaving. Okay, one thing I did want to tell you was, I, after the jerking era, I went solo, right? And I put out a record, and I just wanted to put this on top of your accessibility. Because I had your number, and I texted you the video from my song, and I was like, yo, I just put this out. I hope, I hope you know it. Nigga, you sent me crying faces. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas sent me crying faces, but this is a good thing. Wait. This is a good thing because because the song was was very comedic, right? And and you was like, "Yo, you got the clean version, the dirty version, and the instrumental." I was like, "As a matter of fact, I do. I'll send it right over." And I sent it to you. I don't know if you ever spun it or anything like that, but like, you're the only DJ that I had sent it to. This had to be 2015, 14. You get what I'm saying? And, but you're the only DJ, and I sent it to my DJ home, because I'm a DJ, so I know I got a good DJ network. And you're the only one that watched it and was like, yo, give me this shit. And I was like, I fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my nigga. Mm-hmm. I'll, show you, I'll show you the video after, <laughs> after we sign out. That's so you crazy. I didn't, That's crazy. I didn't even know that. All yeah, right. I, I, I try to just be honest and thorough whenever I can, because... I also don't want to ever put something in somebody's mind that isn't authentic. Right. Especially when it has when it comes to me. Like, and then also, I got that game from top too. Like my like I got the same number. Whatever number you text me is the same. Right. I I, it, I switched phones and lost contact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody, yeah. listen. I've had the same phone number since 2000 for almost for 18 years. I've had the same phone number. Beautiful. Me too. Same phone number, and. And um, I, I was talking to Top about that shit one day. Mm-hmm. Top dog. I was like, la- we was laughing because he got the same number from when he was in the projects. Okay, wait a second. This Top dog, does he have an entertainment company? TDE. I was talking to you. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, I we was talking. To, I was talking to Top. Me, him, and Glasses were laughing because we all got the same number, right? right? Since we forever, right? Yeah. And Top said, he said this thing. He said, niggas who change their number don't know how to say no. 
I was like, damn, that's some real shit. Damn. That's true. And it, the funny thing is, I feel like I'm a nigga that don't know how to say no, but I, to an extent. You get what I'm saying? Like, not to the point where I've ever had to change my number. Right. And the homie Anthony, um, Anthony's a big deal to music industry. He got the same number from before that. He got the same number when we, when we was passing our flyers, and he done managed mm-hmm. Future. He managed Nas. Like, he's the nigga. Mm-hmm. He got the same number from when we was passing out flyers in front of the club in L.A. Yeah. The same um, phone number. Um, niggas who change their number may not know how to say no, or they went through a really rough phase of their life. Sometimes, you know, your financial situation may make you change your number. Sometimes you got to run away from that phone bill and just start a new one. Touche. I've never been that nigga, but I've seen niggas do that. Touche. Say no right. more. Right. So, like, I was with you until I thought about it. I was like, nah. Around 20 years old, some of my niggas just went too broke and just had to let that shit go into collections, but Good they point. still needed the phone. Point taken. You know what I'm saying? I'll, I'll accept that. Right. I'll with that. I have never been oh that. God. I have never been that broke. I still got. The, I feel like that. I've been that broke. I had to let the number go. But you broke. still got. Oh, okay. So you have changed the number for it. No, I've let the number go. I didn't change it. I let it go. It's different. It's different. So you changed it. I didn't change it. They, they changed. They changed. <laughs> <laughs> they. I did not change it. Yeah, if it was, was up to me, that was variety. My I think, phone number would still be two one three. But it ain't under my name though. Shout out to my, and my granddad probably still overrising that money. That's fucked up. Damn. I gotta check on that. Help him. Yeah, I gotta figure that out. Yeah, Cause yeah. I ran that shit up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. De- All right. So, I think that we are at a great climax, and I would hate for this conversation to deflate. But I would like to know what. You want to see in the future of hip hop more authenticity. More authenticity. Yeah, I want people to embrace themselves. I think I think you see the biggest the biggest people embrace who they are. Mm. Eminem. Yeah. Hov. Okay. Kendrick. Yeah. Cole. Yep. Drake. Facts. The, the most authentic artists. Then you got all the artists that kind of throw a little bit extra on it, put more on it, add more bravado, add more jewelry, add more clothes, add more Maseratis, add more Lambos. And it's like, bro, the biggest, you see what it is, the most authentic will always win. You know how I know that you really believe that? Even though I've never questioned anything you've said today. When you talked about the most authentic people, you started naming names. And then when you started talking about people who embellish, you let them name. And no, and if you think about it, that authenticity is free pub. You get what I'm saying? You just gave publicity to Eminem. You gave publicity to Drake. Yeah, because they need my, my 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 pub, but <laughs> <laughs> they don't need it. <laughs> right. But they have it. Yeah. You, they don't even need it. And you gave it to them. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But then there's those other artists where you could possibly be talking about them in a negative light, but it's an authentic light. But they don't need to be seen in that light without being having problems and they don't get names like you gotta you gotta understand that that authenticity is something people want to get behind because they yeah. identify it with you yeah, you get what i'm saying always, if that makes bro. sense yeah always I, that was a nuance that i just recognized yeah as like, you should that genuine authentic authenticity gets cosigns off top you know what i'm saying all, off top and anything else you i thoroughly just, you believe just, in that you just get grouped and that's art in every medium like you know what I'm saying? Whether it's physical art, music, film, all that shit, bro. Yeah, I really believe in that. I think that I think that authenticity is what's missing the most because people are so afraid of themselves and unwilling to look at themselves in the mirror. Not with the not with for what they wearing or how their hairline is, but for their soul, their spirit, their morals, their principles, their values. People are so afraid of themselves, mm-hmm. and I think if we have more people that embrace who they actually were at the core, everybody would be in a better position. That's true. Okay, one more thing. One more thing and we're going to sign out. Do you think people are ready to receive realness from everyone? Hell no. Not even close. But you still going to give it to them anyway? If you ask me. I learned tact when I was 27. I didn't Explain. Can you elaborate on that? That's the <laughs> third time I heard you say that shit. I didn't, know, I didn't know what tact was until I was 27 years old, and I, I realized that. I'm 33, and I don't know what tact is. Tell me. So tact is basically the art of being of being reluctant with information, mm-hmm. right? 
in, in a nutshell. I'm going to give you a paraphrase. My girl tell me that's lying. That's not, it, Yes and no. It's not lying. See, the thing is, this is the problem I have with humans, right? Mm. Humans can't take unsolicited information. Cool. That's tax. I would not say nothing about I hate your, I hate your tank top. You know, it's, it's fucking ugly, right? I won't say that. Now, the problem I have with humans is you request information from me. You then can't dictate how I deliver that information. Facts. You can't say, like, you, you have a girl, right? Yeah. Because you're a better person than me. I don't. So if your girl say, hey, babe, how I look in this dress? You probably going to say something nice, nice or embellished. Even if you think she looks like a, cra- she look crazy. Absolutely. You're going to say, babe, you probably, I like the other one better. You're going to say something like that. If she, like, again, I'm literal. Babe, how do I look in this dress? Mm. Crazy. Mm. <laughs> That. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Because you requested information. Right. Now, if you don't ask me shit, I won't say shit. I get it. But you, but but the problem that human beings have, again, being back to authenticity and what people can do with themselves, is people lie to themselves and then sell that lie to everybody else. You never gonna have a girlfriend, bro. I'm okay with that too. But listen, I hope so. If I don't believe in titles either, that's a whole nother conversation. I hear but you. but you like the co-guard. That's titles. No, I don't believe in titles with women. Ah. This yeah, is a moniker. I get that. Yeah, Women are not monikers. Yeah, you're definitely never going to have a girlfriend. Yeah, tit- but titles are stupid. No, okay. To you. So, to you have a girl, that's why you're saying that. Absolutely. She's going to watch this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. But that's that's you wearing the suit to the wedding. Absolutely. And that's and that's okay. And I get bitches. Wear, wear the suit to the wedding. <laughs> you ain't got no bitches, bro. So, <laughs> at all. So, pe- so <laughs> we're trying to say bitches. At all. So, my thing is, if you request information from me, if you say, hey, Tell me what you think about this song. This song is fucking horrible. Yeah. You can't say, damn, you have to say it like that. No, you can't dictate how I to say how I say what I feel. Facts. You asked me a question. Right. Now, I was never gonna tell you that until you asked for it. Boom. I get you. That's the point. Ooh. I love it. I love it, and I want you to keep being you. Um, I don't know no other way to be, bro. Good. Stay in your confusion of other people's reality because it works. I'm not confused. They confused. Right. I just actually live in, a, in reality. They live in the Matrix. Okay. The paradigm between the, the movie, right? I eat soup every day. Just, just the, the movie, right? I, 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 I eat, I eat the you. bullshit every day. They want to eat steaks and shit. Life is grand. We, we, we bad bitches. We pretty. My music is fire. Live. Just don't come over here and try to sell me that shit. Because right. I'm not a battery. You're not a what now? A battery. There's another Matrix reference. Okay, I don't remember that reference. But it's okay. You're not a battery. I believe that. I can see. I I see lack of battery in you. Yeah. That should just tight. I think that the world needs more of you. Um, one day, you're probably wanna go, gonna want to cap a little bit. Why? So you can have like a girl. But see, the thing is, this is, the, and I just had this conversation with a with a female human, right? And I was talking to her, and we was talking about it, and we were saying, I was saying, she was saying, like, yeah, guys do this, and guys do that, and I'm like, yeah, but, like, she was like, well, you need to just be a little bit more subtle, right? And I'm like, yeah, see, because, and I said, but why do you think guys are doing that? She's like, because they want to fuck me. I said, that's true. I want to fuck you, too. I'm just not willing to lie to do it. Mm. That's just the truth. I'm just not willing to do that. So if you're not going to do it just because of me, GP, then why do I actually want it? Right. That's probably a very um, satisfying feeling when you say shit like that and then you still get to fuck. I don't get to fuck. It's an equal exchange of energy. That's oh, okay. <laughs> that you can <coughs> let fuck me ahead. Hey. Sex is not a gift to me. Facts. It's not a gift Facts. to you. It's I an equal exchange of it's goods and exchange. services. I, I totally agree with you. West Coast. Right. <laughs> Last thing before I leave. I promise you this is the last question. I said it twice already. You said it three times. No, I'm fucking with you. Go ahead. It was two. It was two. <laughs> um, but this is the third one. I guess. I don't know. Um, why is your name DJ Head without an A? Because um, they made fun of me. Who made fun of you? Just the, all the homies and shit. They actually call me Big Head, Rock Head, Boulder Dome, Thumper, <laughs> Jack. Um, it was all um, Cranium. Macrocephalosis, that's actually a real word. <laughs> no, bro. Somebody looked up a big ass word. To Macrocephalosis is the condition of having an abnormally large head. Oh my God. Who called you that? 
Yo, 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 homies was on point, bro. Oh, yo, God. Yo, homies was on was point, bro. With jokes, bro. So, oh, my but, God. So, yeah, they just called me all kind of shit. But I was, I've always been raw in video games. I'm a nerd, right? Okay. So, you know, like Mario Kart, all the old school games, Street Nobody Fighter. Nobody could beat you. Nobody could beat me. You get a high score. You could put your initials. But there was only room for three letters, so I took the A out. Mm, that's uh, hard. That's hard. Uh, that's dope. You know DJ Hand from Detroit? Yeah, this is with an A. You know you guys is like Wikipedia is like intertwined. I know. My my assistant's fixing that shit. That shit is fucked up. I was like, whoa, this nigga got Eminem credits and he was an eight mile? And I looked up scenes from eight miles like that's not him, bro. <laughs> nah, that's yeah, that's the legend, that's the OG out there. I'm you know. You ever met him? No. Damn. I I, I know I, I wish I had a better story for you, but that's, I just made I was getting teased. So that is nigga, the best that story you ever gave. <laughs> what the fuck you mean? <laughs> That's the only thing that would ever make sense with why your name well, My is head it. not even that big. I guarantee you both of y'all probably wear bigger hats than me. Allegedly. My head is just odd shaped. It's just shaped weird. Oh, yeah. it's like unlong. So like it's, a, no, it's oblong. That's what, that's the word I meant. Yeah, I know. I've had way more alcohol than you can drink. Gotcha. I don't right. drink. I, yeah, I know. Clearly. Yeah. So, I, I am telling the truth. I said unlong, and you said oblong, which is the real word. Right. That is true, bro. You got a lot of, like, notches on your hat stitch. When I wear a hat, there's, like, two. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, for sure. You got, you did I'm, it. You I'm head, two. bro. I'm DJ head. Yeah. That would make sense, right? Yeah, hopefully your career goes like your head and just is very long. <laughs> I, I hope so, too. Right. I think that's a perfect time to sign out. Thank you for stopping by, appreciate bro. Appreciate you. I really appreciate you for coming by. This is a great thing. Love. Yeah. <laughs>